Ooh. Going live. Sweet. Okay. We are live, Leia. Okay. Very exciting stream today. <laughs> uh, this stream, just for a bit of a taste, uh, we'll be launching the DIY version of the Quinley kit. But um, before I get into all of that, uh, I'd like to introduce a brand new guest, uh, Leia, who's been with us for, this is your second week, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Two weeks. <laughs> And she's graciously donated her Ender 3 Pro, which we'll be upgrading on stream and talking about the brand new kit that we're planning to release. Um, and what's super exciting is at 6 p.m., so in, in 30 minutes during the stream, we'll actually be making the kit live on shop.3dq.com. And everyone watching the stream is able to get an additional $30 off with the code in the top right. Let's hope I pointed to it correctly. <laughs> we'll see in a second. Yeah. So yeah, this is going to be a super exciting stream. We're going to talk about um, the kit itself. We'll be putting the kit together. Um, we'll be talking about why we've decided to release a DIY kit. Um, and I'm, I'm sure actually a lot of the people watching now have been hoping for a DIY kit for a while since we were inspired by our existing users. Um, and yeah, we'll just be talking about automated printing, why you would want it, and why we think it should be so um, accessible. So before we get into all that, um, Leah, why don't you uh, introduce yourself to everyone on the stream? <laughs> Sounds good. Um, so I'm one of the new hardware engineering interns at 3DQ, and yes, this is my second week, and it's been pretty interesting. I've definitely learned a lot more than I thought I would in the first two weeks. Even though I have had a 3D printer for a while, I don't think I've played around with many of the settings and like what you can like really do if you try to do it. I think I've just been on like the basic level of 3D printing. <laughs> so there's that. And um, I'm also studying mechanical engineering at UDC. I'm going to be sub-specializing in biomedical engineering, but I think that 3D printing can be probably used in any industry. So I think it'd be really useful to just learn a lot more about it in general and just having more knowledge in that aspect. Uh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I've been here for all of the streams pretty much, <laughs> but in case you don't know me, I'm Mateo. I'm one of the co-founders of 3DQ and I'm in charge of innovation. We've kept the title very vague because in a startup, responsibilities are extremely broad. <laughs> um, yeah, so, I mean, why don't we introduce what the DIY kit is and what Quinley is and, and how the DIY kit is different from regular Quinley. Um, so for those of you who don't know, uh, last October, we launched an automation upgrade kit for the Ender 3, which we decided to call Quinley because it has a lot of parts in it and Quinley is an easy shorthand. Um, and what this kit does is it essentially automates the part removal um, and part queuing and file management for your Ender 3. And so I mean, what that ultimately means is that you can load up a ton of files onto your Ender 3 and um, through a mixture of, of hardware components and the Quinley software, the printer will essentially manage itself and go run through the queue of jobs um, and turn your kind of desktop prototyping machine into a desktop production machine. And um, so this kit has been out now for uh, we started shipping them at the end of December, um, so it's been about six months since they've been in the wild, and um, we'll go through and, and talk about how our customers have been using using the Quinley, but internally we have um, 51 Ender 3s that we actually use to produce the 3D printed parts for the Quinley. Um, and so today what we're launching um, is an even lower cost automation upgrade for uh, your 3D printers, which is the Quinley DIY kit. Um, so many people have been telling us that they would like to print their own parts for the Quinley. And so that's the whole point of this kit. If you are kind of like a 
a hobbyist or have that additional time and don't want to spend the extra money on um, pre-printed parts and, and, and a kit that's pre-put together, um, you can just buy the uh, DIY kit and print all the parts yourself. And what's, what's really cool about it is because we'll be releasing all the files, um, if your specific application requires like a different mounting system or different panels and we'll, we'll go through all the parts, um, you'll be able to modify and share those mods as you see fit. Um, which I think will be very exciting to see what people do with it. Um, and then the other point behind the DIY Quinley kit is by pushing the price of automated 3D printing down, we can like really start to um, achieve the longer term vision of 3DQ, which is to make um, mass production on 3D printers a viable option because we've seen everyone making these beautiful prototypes that are pretty much ready to be thrown into a store on their printers but there's no easy way of um, moving the volume up to the next step. And that's where the Quinley um, automated upgrade comes in. And yeah, we'll, we'll get into that and we'll, we'll talk about that as we start putting the kit together um, and as pe more people start coming in. But just as a reminder, um, if you are interested at all about automation for your printer, and this is, we're talking about the same type of automation that belt printers provide, but what's so cool about it is it's on your existing printer. Yeah. You don't have to buy a new printer. And it's right now, it's an upgrade that's less than a hundred bucks. Yeah. Um, sure. Again, th we have a lot of stories to share. So yeah. we'll get into that after the <laughs> intro, but um, I think this is like a, a really good deal um, in terms of the increase in uptime that you'll see from your printer as soon as you don't have to constantly be babysitting it. Um, yeah, so why don't we just get into it. Um, okay. You've already unboxed yeah. the parts. Um, we should talk about what comes in the kit mm -hmm. and what what comes in the full kit and what, what we've omitted in order to bring the price of the DIY kit down. Yes, that sounds good. Um, okay. So we've got, mostly these are all the 3D printed parts, so these are the parts that you guys would print yourselves. Mm -hmm. And here's our piece. I printed them in blue because I thought that would look sick with the uh, LCD screen. And it's also like translucent blue, so I thought that would be even better. And I kind of really like these parts actually because the um, infill is visible, so you can actually have like a cool infill when it's translucent and kind of like that. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, we also just have like the hardware kit, but it has like a cool. The thing here, this is the other one. What are you looking for? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, that is the normal one, but then this one has like cute little USB stick. Yeah. So it's you got, it comes with um, all the like regular hardware you need so you don't have to source a ton of metric screws and then. Um, it comes with a software key that gives you a free lifetime Quinley subscription, or it's not a subscription, it's just free lifetime access to the software and all the updates that we're planning to put out um, that manages your 3D printer, um, as well as the file for all the parts that you can print. So you can mm -hmm. decide to print these files or you can modify them and print them to suit your needs more specifically. Yes, exactly. And then there's also the classic vapor bed. Yeah, and then of course there's the vapor bed, which is kind of the key hardware innovation um, that we've developed at 3DQ, which is what uh, it is, it, well, with the software is, is part of the, um, like is the key thing to the automation. And the vapor bed is just a special print surface that we spent a very long time, many years developing that pretty much works with most filaments. We have actually a, a big list of materials on our site. We've tested over 60 different materials and brands and colors on it. Um, and it sticks really well when hot and then completely releases the part when cold. So it's kind of similar to how you can get this effect with um, small PLA parts on glass or medium sized PLA parts on PEI. Um, but we formulated this bed specifically to be consistent across all part types because 
we would like to be able to do um, something with a tiny footprint like this and something with a more massive footprint like one of these um, back to back and not have to worry about adjusting our settings too much. That all gets handled by the formulation for the print surface and um, the Quinley software that actually runs your G codes in your print too. Yeah. We actually got a, a question from Dural. Uh, mm -hmm. What type of filament is recommended? What type of filament is recommended? Um, PLA is what we use most often. Um, I've, the vapor bed actually performs better with ABS, surprisingly. Um, so you can print pretty large open air ABS prints. Um, we've also tested it with a lot of people, um, and we'll show later examples from our customers are using PET G. Um, we've done like, what is it, PCTPE, which is a really weird material. We've done polypropylene as well, works to to a good extent. Um, nylon will stick and release, but it's not recommended to use on a Ender 3, which is just open air. Um, polycarbon is good too. Oh yeah, polycarbon. Poly, polycarbonate really works well. Steven, do you mind make, fixing the framing? Because my head is completely <laughs> Oh. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. The <laughs> yeah, okay. Thank you. Um, that's better. I'm yeah. still cut off. It's oh, just oh, a yeah, little pig. <laughs> I'm cut off by the code that you can use at shop.com. Yeah. Get, get those 30, deals, guys. $30 <laughs> off. Yeah. Okay. There are quite a lot of questions coming up. Oh. The DIY link that won't work. Will it be available later? Yeah, so we're yeah. launching the product at 6 p.m. today. Um, so during the stream, that's only a few minutes away, only 20 minutes away, we'll be we'll be launching the kit and, and I'll make an announcement. Um, so I guess until then, why don't we just dive in and, and start showing how simple the assembly is. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> to turn your desktop prototyping <laughs> machine into a desktop manufacturing machine. Yeah. Okay, um, that sounds good. Yeah, so if you want to. Okay, so we have the vapor bed first, and I'd just like to show my old bed because it looks pretty sad. Zoom in a little bit. Okay. You don't have to zoom in, you've got two cameras too. Oh, yeah, we want to go off the. Uh... I'll hold it up so then at least you can see it in full. Here you go. There yeah, we go. Me... Let me throw it onto the bead cam here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So as you can see, um, this was a magnetic bed, and it worked for a while, and then it wouldn't stick one day. Uh, and then I used hairspray, and something happened when I tried to wash it off, so now I just have a permanent imprint of whatever I was trying to print. And I remember this was a really stressful print, too, because I was in final season, and I was trying to, trying to study for, I think, one of my math courses which was a little bit rough. And then my friend who had their capstone due in, I think four hours or something like that. Uh, he didn't have anything printed for his capstone yet. So he needed a case for like a calculator or something. So <laughs> he was like, can you print it for me please? And I was like, okay, um, yeah. sure. And then I kind of printed it, but that probably took me like at least four or five tries and it was only because i used hairspray that it actually stuck to the bed so <laughs> had a rough day <laughs> yeah yeah and that's that was one of the first things that we aimed to fix with the vapor surface is not needing to worry about the performance waning over time and not having to worry about putting additives like glue or, or um tape or in your case hairspray yeah. That's like that, that plastic, too. <laughs> like nothing is working enough to put hairspray on. Literally. Yeah. Um, so this is like, yeah, one of the core features of the Quinley kit and will be key to getting your Quinley DIY kit working. Yeah. And again, like the main idea behind this bed is consistent performance, that you can print big parts and small parts and you don't have to worry about adjusting settings. That is what I need. <laughs> See, my head is cut off again. <laughs> oh, my so also we got a question about uh, the material that we use to print the DIY kit. Oh. Oh yeah. This is just printed in PLA. Yeah, it was just a special form labs, I think, 
blue ocean, something like that. Ocean we blue. used it all. Form teacher, yeah. Yeah, they were yeah, really good. Form teacher of CLA. Uh, yeah. But um, if you're not planning to put it in an enclosure or anything, and just gonna have it on the side of your desk for daily use, PLA will work fine. Pretty much any PLA should work pretty well. Um, we use PLA for the mounts for all of our um, like production machines in 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 our office. Um, the only thing I would consider is maybe if you're planning to put it in like a lac enclosure or a heated enclosure of any type, you might want to consider something like ABS or PET G, um, because PLA obviously will get start to get stuck <laughs> pretty quickly. That makes sense. Okay, why okay. don't we get started with the bed install? Okay, so this is my first time ever doing this. Um, so Mateo is going to walk me through it, even though I've watched the video i'm still a bit stressed about doing it this is live. yeah this is honestly like we could turn around the printer if that helps you can us. do it like this okay. it would be fine okay, okay. this is considered the most difficult step okay. but i will say out of all of our customers no one has ever come to us with an issue applying the bed so if you <laughs> fail today you'll be the first ever well <laughs> no pressure no pressure <laughs> okay there's no okay. pressure. So I know I have to peel it off. Should I set the temperature first to 40? Yeah, I'll set it for you. Okay. So on the under three, um, it's recommended to set the temperature to 40 degrees C just because that kind of starts. Um, well, what it does is it means your bed is slightly expanded and you're applying the bed, the vapor bed onto a surface that's kind of the size it will be while it's printing. That makes sense. Um, because it is kind of a known thing that the ender build plate likes to move around <laughs> quite a bit. <laughs> um, that's also part of the reason we chose the adhesive we did to back the vapor bed. Um, it's used in pretty much every print surface, but it's... Um, I think it's 468 MP. Yeah, 468 MP. It's a high temperature adhesive. It's good to, I mean, we've used it up to 135, 140 degrees C pretty without it having any problems. Um, and what's nice about it is it does squish a little bit, okay. which helps um, when this bed decides to flex, when the heated bed on the ender is flexing. Um, it can kind of compensate against that. Okay. Now I need the cloth right to like bend it and like yes. squish. That's the whole <laughs> squish. Tristan is saying that this part is the worst. Oh God. Thanks, Tristan. That gives me great confidence. And that yeah, maybe maybe he's right. No one oh, would God. No one would admit that they failed because it'd be so embarrassing. The first time it touches the aluminum, it tends to stick quite hard. Yeah, so be uh, super uh, careful about the alignment. Okay. I think you're good. Okay. Okay, squish it. Squish it in now. Oh, I'm not bending it very fast. Okay. <laughs> it doesn't have to be super bent. Okay. Just make sure you're working from the top down. Okay. And it's important to be careful with the application and the construction of the kit because if you want your 3D printer to perform reliably, it needs to be in kind of reliable shape. Um, something that I think is a bad habit that a lot of us form using 3D printers um, in the traditional sense, way is because we only need it to, we're only thinking about getting the next part finished, <laughs> we kind of get it just calibrated enough to be able to finish that print. And when you start looking at using 3D printing for high volume manufacturing, like like we do internally and like many of our Quinley users do, um, that kind of mentality is like a really bad, ha or a really difficult habit to break. Um, like, I guess, personally, my Quinley kit at home, I just, I'll actually spend maybe an hour and an hour and a half making sure it's perfectly calibrated and when I do that I can actually run it for I mean I, I've run it for two weeks at one point <laughs> just w w non-stop and the thing that ended up stopping it was that one of the bed <laughs> leveling wheels actually completely detached <laughs> from the printer which is kind of kind of yeah it was pretty like unexpected okay I did something <laughs> 
That looks pretty good. Yeah, it looks like you got it right. It's, Didn't fail. It's on. It's on. There you go. I mean, okay. that's all you have to do. That was the, that was the hardest step. Okay, I was really stressed. Now it's on. <laughs> Actually, things can still go wrong. That's what she said. <laughs> um, um, I mean, once you've got the bed on, it's pretty hard for things to go wrong at that point. We just have to make sure to level it and get that okay, right. Okay, that, that's, I'm also stressed about that, but okay. Yes. Um, you, you must be like the right? most nervous, uh, most nervous user of Quinley. <laughs> I think I am. Maybe that's just don't say that they're nervous, you know. <laughs> Same thing as Kristen was saying. Yeah. You know. Yeah, that's Glad true. I feel I feel <laughs> so nervous turning my first picture on. So oh, that's fair though. <laughs> yeah. Um okay, so you've got the bed on. Yes. Do we need to turn it up to eighty or something like that? Yes. So once once it's applied, uh turn the heat up to eighty is good. Um and that'll just kind of let the adhesive set. It actually makes the adhesive really soft oh. so that it sets well against the aluminum in case you have bubbles and stuff. Oh, red bubbles? Um, not really. I can't, I couldn't tell. Okay. Let's push more. You usually squish the bubbles away. I don't see any bubbles. Okay. You did a good job. Let's go, okay. guys. <laughs> no bubbles. Ideal. Cool. Okay. So why don't you start putting on the next step and then we can also talk a bit about like why you would want to automate your ender. There are kind of two big reasons. Um, but so what, what's the next step? Got the tilt. The tilt brackets. Yeah. So just be careful because the bed is hot right now. Yeah. By the way, guys, if you're liking the screen so far, Slap the like button. Uh, it really helps us though. Yeah. Get more people to know about Quimby. Exactly. It's actually a very fun little upgrade. Let me just move the mic off of the bed, off of the table. All right. Yeah. So I guess one of the main reasons that you should consider automating your 3D printer, you've probably all seen the CR30 belt printer. It looks really cool and is able to do infinitely long parts. But one of the biggest reasons people buy belt printers in the first place is to be able to use things that they've designed to be 3D printed and mass manufacture them. Um, so what Quinley is basically a very, very accessible version of mass manufacturing because we've consolidated um, all of the automation into either the print surface or the Quinley software, um, we're able to make the entire system uh, like very accessible and very easy to do uh, set up yourself. And so what that means is to the thousands of you out there who are constantly designing things to be 3D printed, um, but then don't have a means of commercializing those ideas or, or making those many of those ideas without immense hassle. It means with, with an automation kit, um, be it the Quinley or be it some more expensive belt printers, um, you're actually able to take that idea and completely under your control have the entire production process. Um, and it's actually very, very easy to scale it up um, by quite a lot. So in our case, we have um, 50 under threes that we use to do the production. And uh, we, we got most of those um, actually just about a year ago now. And, and since we've got them, we've printed tens of thousands of parts inside a tiny, Sorry. <laughs> tiny, tiny <laughs> office in Vancouver, BC. Um, and I would risk to say that even like technically, we're probably one of the largest plastic parts manufacturers in our province just because um, in BC, like warehouse spacing is so, um, actually there's just not really manufacturing in Canada specifically, everything kind of gets outsourced overseas. And there are a couple of reasons to that as well, like why you would consider outsourcing. One of those reasons being that um, when it's really expensive to set up a manufacturing system, it makes sense to have one company invest a lot of money and then work with many clients and, and centralize that manufacturing in, in one area. Um, and that's kind of how the world's operated since 
injection molding was invented 100 years ago, the capital cost of setting up such a system is very, very expensive. But what we're starting to see now with 3D printing is a bit more of um, a democratized manufacturing era where people have their printers at home. And you, you've, you've seen companies like, um, I think Ikea has done this, where they've published files for their furniture online and people can manufacture things in their own house. And that was kind of the craze of um, 2012, where on the news, you would always hear like, oh, everyone's going to own a 3D printer in their house and everyone's going <laughs> to be able to print everything. And all you'd be buying on Amazon are things like just files that you would then get like replicated at home. Um, and I think that that's true to some extent. I think in 2012, the technology was not quite yet there. And I, I still think that a household 3D printer might not be there. But what I do think is really common nowadays is you'll know someone with a 3D printer and you'll ask, and, and they have some level of expertise and you can ask them to print you parts. Um, and so what we're trying to do with Quinley and just automated 3D printing in general is make that entire process easier and allow those people to scale up. So when I had my first printer uh, six years ago now in, in 2015, um, I was using it for myself and, and that was fine. And I was, I was using it quite a lot. But then as soon as my friends heard that I had a 3D printer, I quickly got like inundated with so many requests to print stuff. And I found that my 3D printer at home was sitting idle for like 60% of the day because at the time I was, I was in school. And so I couldn't be at the printer to remove the parts constantly. Um, and so like that, that was a big challenge. That was actually one of the um, things that inspired me to start looking at how do we automate 3D printing? Because on a traditional printer, everything up to the point of part removal and getting the first layer to stick is yeah. pretty much automated. Like the bulk of it is, but there's this massive bottleneck where you don't know if that first layer is going to stick consistently and there's no way to get the parts off. So that's, that's where I first started looking. So true. Yeah. yeah. That's, struggle. That, that, yeah. There's like, I'm sure everyone's got stories of like staring at the first layer for like I 20 minutes. I literally do that every single time. Yeah. It's mesmerizing. I will watch a 3D printer for like 10 minutes. Is it, is it like, because you want to, or is it a, <laughs> like a Stockholm syndrome where you have to like, I think I it's Stockholm Yeah, you know, when I started, my friend was just like, don't you dare. Yeah. And then afterwards, I'm like, wow, this is safe. Yeah, exactly. Like, a lot of people can probably relate. I, I mean, as can I, to just <laughs> staring at the first layer for like the first 30 minutes to make sure it doesn't fail. And then a lot of people are shocked that with Mike Quinley at home, sometimes Steven sends me something to print at like 11 p.m. <laughs> and I'm already in bed and I'll just send stuff from my phone because I know that the Quinley automation system is so reliable, but also the, the Ender as a printer is really reliable as well. And I, I'll send like five prints from my phone. It'll, it'll start on my printer and I'll wake up into the mor in the morning with five of those prints like perfectly released from the <laughs> bed, all printed and not have to worry about any of that. Um, and like, when I talk to my non 3d printing friends, they're always like, isn't that how 3d printers already work? Like, <laughs> I wish. Yeah, that's, that's how they should work. And, <laughs> and that was kind of like, oh, okay, this is, this is something, uh, worth pursuing because just, just on a single printer level, it, it removes so much labor. And then once that hurdle is overcome, you can start looking at, Hey, well, I'm running this printer like 24 seven for weeks at a time without having to look at it. What about, that means that I have the time to get a second printer or a third printer exactly. or a 10th printer. <laughs> and so, um, that's where things start to really get interesting is, is when you start looking at, um, using 3d printers for production. Um, it is 6 PM right now, which means. The sale on our website, Shop3DQ, has gone live, and so has the discount code in the top right. So uh, if you want to get a whole $30 off the um, DIY Quinley Automation Kit, um, feel free to use that code. I'd also suggest sharing that code with your friends because this is a one-time 
special launch sale. Um, have them join the stream. I mean, I'd love to hear from you guys where you think um, like 3D printing could be used uh, in manufacturing. I think like they're pretty much, we've seen limitless applications in prototyping. And I, I think why not just extend that, make more of these parts you're already making and just use them as final products. Oh, we got Media Man, already bought one. He's already <laughs> bought one. <laughs> there we go. That's awesome. Very nice. Thank you so much. I have three of the original kids. Oh yeah, Mr. Schaefer. <laughs> He's got the original kits. Um, yeah, we've got a lot of people from our Discord who who have the original Quinley kits, and and we'll actually go through and talk about some of their stories as well. Um, it's been really amazing to see people on there. Like people, like I feel like people like to look down on the Ender Three, but it is really a workhorse machine. Like um, many of the original Quinley users have printed like hundreds of parts that they wouldn't have on their under three. So it's pretty amazing to see. Um, feel free to interrupt my monologue at any time, <laughs> Stephen, and <laughs> throw some comments at me because I'd love to hear from the chat. Um, this is actually the most viewers we've ever had oh, no. on this stream. <laughs> that makes me stress. So yeah, I'd love to hear from you guys. Like if, if you have any questions or, or want to discuss any sort of like yeah. high volume purposes for FDM, um, yeah, I'd love to talk about it. Yeah, I guess we'll, uh, while we wait for that, I just want to mention that the, uh, the sale is only live for three hours, and then after that, it'll be going up to the original uh, price of one twenty nine ninety nine. That's true. So make sure to share this stream with anyone you think might be interested in getting one mm -hmm. of these kits. Um, and it's, it's not just for high volume applications. There is the whole angle of it's very easy to use. Uh, it's just a binder clip. Okay. Um, yeah, I find myself printing more just because it's easy to send a print and like, I don't need to worry about leveling the bed. Yeah. I can just send it. I don't even have to look at it. I can just wait like an hour or two and then my part's ready. Yeah. I feel like for the, those who are more designing, I feel like 3d printing appeals to those people who are really interested in designing their own parts, mm -hmm. but at the same time that group of people might not be as interested in fiddling with printer hardware all the time. <laughs> and so I think like the, the automation kit, or you can almost think of it as like, just it's the Quin, the reason we named it Quinley is because Quinley is kind of like an assistant's name and Quinley is the assistant that helps run your printer for you. So for those of you who are more design inclined and less, less about tinkering, with the hardware constantly just to, to get one print going, um, Quinley is really useful because I have a feeling like sometimes, especially when I have a really big print job, I get this sense of dread of having <laughs> to like babysit my printer for like 50 parts. Yeah, it's not fun. Like the annoying part is just lighting and sending every print, preparing every print. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then imagine now like watching every first layer and and then making sure that you're around to remove the print. That's one of the other yeah. uh, things. It's really hard to do overnight print. Yeah. Just like get up and go get the next print ready. It, it's possible too. Like a lot of people will batch their parts, but then that involves more complicated slicing and just more time investment. And then of course, batching parts is like a risk reward thing where you can batch, you know, 12 hours worth of prints on a single print bed. But if one fails, what do you do? Yeah, um, everything fails. And also when you're printing on more of the bed, there's more risk in terms of things becoming unlevel or decalibrated over time. Um, so I, I like to just send them sequentially on the printer. Um, for those of you who are just joining us, because I've noticed the, there are a lot of new viewers, um, Leia is showcasing the DIY version of our yeah. of our Quinley automation upgrade. Uh, this version is available now uh, for less than a hundred bucks, and that's just during this stream. So for the next three hours, um, yeah. And if you want to turn your existing beloved Ender <laughs> Three into from a prototyping workhorse to a production workhorse. 
I'd highly suggest sticking around the stream and learning more about the kit because um, I might be biased, but I love using my <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit Just biased. a little biased. Well, we got a question here. Um, some other bed surprises <laughs> for Mr. Schaefer. What Are we still waiting on them or what's, what's the deal with it? Bed surprises? Bed? Some sort of surprise coming up he's asking about. Some sort of surprise. Oh, wait. <laughs> Do you know the surprise? He said it's definitely the best bed surface I have ever used. Oh. Okay. No, that's not being announced. That, <laughs> that's coming up. <laughs> we're not going to say anything secret. about that. That's a secret. Today we're focused <laughs> on the DIY kit for Quinley. But that being said, there are like a lot of things planned um, over the summer in terms of the Quinley software, in terms of new Quinley hardware. So. Um, if you are interested about hearing that, maybe you don't, hmm, how should I leak this? Maybe if you, <laughs> if you don't have an Ender 3, but are interested in high volume printing or turning your printer um, kind of into a manufacturing system, uh, I would highly recommend subscribing to our channel um, and keeping those notifications on because we plan to do a whole ton of announcements uh, over the course of the summer. And if you do have an Ender and have been using Quinley, um, one big announcement you may have missed at the top of the stream is that we're actually going to be changing um, the way our software works and we'll be offering the basic um, version of the software uh, completely free um, to all new and existing users. Um, so that's a lifetime like license, I guess. Um, and that it also includes updates as well. So we'll be continually updating the basic version. And there's actually a really big update um, that we plan to release uh, in the next couple of weeks um, that you'll be learning more about soon, which is all the more reason to follow <laughs> or join the mailing list. But we'll also be announcing everything on the YouTube channel and, and showing everything on the YouTube channel yeah. as well. Subscribe. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, we got a question about the uh, Marlin. The media man's got a highly customized ender, mm -hmm. um, and he wants to use his firmware that he's built, but also include some of the, uh, you know, the firmware that we need for Quinley. So, where could he go to for help with that? That's a really good question. So all of our staff and engineers are on our Discord server, which I think is in the description of this live stream. And I know Media Man, you're already in there. Feel free to ping any of them um, for help. We're trying to build the Quinley kit to support any sort of mods that you've got on your Ender 3, unless they're like printer changing, like completely <laughs> printer changing mods. So like, as long as it can still run Marlin, um, we're trying to support that type of mods. Um, actually, on our site, we've been doing a series um, of blogs called Mod Mondays, where we look at mods we've done in-house and mods some of our users have done um, that are all supported by Quinley. So I guess just to give a brief rundown, like any sort of hot end change you might have done. Um, I think dual extrusion works fine, though I don't know of anyone presently using it. Um, Dual C axis is fine. Um, if you change like your hot end mounting system, which might be what Media Man's asking about, it should work fine as well. Um, and also on the Quinley software side, we've been working on um, we've been working on moving any sort of custom stuff out of the Marlin firmware so that. Uh, any sort of custom changes are actually handled completely on the Quinley side. And the Quinley side runs um, on a Raspberry Pi. It's kind of similar to how you would run Octoprint and, and communicates to Marlin over the USB. Um, that being said, if you get a kit and run into something that's incompatible, just go on our Discord, post some questions, uh, and, and one of our engineers will be happy to help you set up your firmware. Or even some of the community members like uh, Jack thy meme lord who, Jack. Yeah, who's been extremely active in the discord and has also been extremely helpful when it comes to setting up people's marlin um like who knows somebody might have the exact same mods that you do and might already have made some firmware for it 
Okay, one more question uh, from Thornhill Woodward. She says, you haven't, haven't decided which kit to get, but do you do the full kit with the pie included? That's a good question. Um, so there's actually a worldwide, uh, most of you probably already know, there's a worldwide shortage of semiconductors and the Pi Foundation has restricted sales to businesses. So we actually haven't been able to purchase we still have some in stock, I believe, but we're unable to purchase large volumes of the pie. So what we're doing instead is um, with the DIY kit, it does not come with the pie, um, but we'll help you, like we'll link you. We've got a page um, that shows pie suppliers around the world. And in fact, it's often much less expensive for you to source your own pie than it is to buy one of the pie kits that um, we're offering on our site. Alex, we've actually stopped them. offering a pie kit because we can't get more pies. So. That's true. Yeah, <laughs> we've actually, that's true. We, we used to offer a, a, a pie kit that comes with the firmware pre-flash um, on the pie. But yeah, it's it's not available anymore just because of the shortage. Um, that being said, we're also considering like adding pre-flashed SD cards, maybe as add-ons or something like that. So if that interests you, please let us know. Um, but other than that, Hop into our Discord or send us an email, um, and we'll link you to a supplier near you. And you'll you'll probably end up saving actually quite a bit, um, just because not having to double ship the pie is is pretty good. Um, and something else to note about the pie shortage is this only affects businesses themselves um, because the pie, pie Foundation is like really hobbyist focused. So you. Um, sourcing your own pie, you probably shouldn't have any issues. I know in the US, it's still available on Amazon for the normal price. Um, it's just that buying in bulk is an issue. Um, so while Leia is getting this put together, I thought it might be interesting to go through some of our customers' stories because they've got um, we actually got a bunch of pictures from people who have been using the, the normal Quinley kit um, and we can talk a bit about like what they've been doing with it. Um, so I'll go to, who should I go to first? Jeremy Owens. Jeremy's got a really, really cool use case. Let me just pull up the, his pictures. Okay. So Jeremy works um, with a company called Matco Tools, uh, which is located in, or he, he's a district manager for North Dakota and Minnesota, and he has seven years of experience with 3D printing. And so they've what they do is they sell tools and they have, I guess he has 25 trucks under his management. Um, and what he's been 3D printing is these really cool tool display systems um, for the various, like for the trucks in his fleet. Um, and so I think you're seeing the socket rail holders, and then he's also got um, electric tool holders as well for like a display uh, set up in his truck. And you can see there are like a lot of sm sm small to medium sized 3D prints. And so in those 25 trucks, each truck has 25 of those socket rail holders and eight to 12 of these electric tool holders um, in each truck. And the reason he's been doing this is they're just presenting the tools in this way has actually increased his sales quite a lot. Um, he says that the trucks that are using uh, this system of display that he's 3D printed um, have seen like a quadruple increase in sales, which is really impressive. I mean, presentation is kind of everything with sales. So, and, and the fact that he devised the system itself is, is really cool. Um, like it, it's pretty amazing. And so I guess his, he was printing these without Quinley for quite a long time before. Um, and part of the problem was that a full truck required um, 75 hours of printing. And he, he said that the entire, the entire fleet uh, would have taken 1800 hours of printing total. And when you're running, 
standard Ender 3 having to print hundreds of parts. Kind of, even, <laughs> like, you can see in the photos, he's batching them, right? Yeah. But, um, like, even just having to manage that would be a nightmare. Like, just imagine how many prints that is. Dedication. So... <laughs> What's really cool, so so before before he installed Quinley on his machine, he um, produced two hundred holders in two years. Um, but so like here, there it, it's playing photos of of the Quinley. Um, so yeah, he's been doing. He did. It took him two years to do two hundred of these pieces. Oh. Because he's doing it like when he's at home or in his free time, and and he's out driving around doing sales, but but with the Quinley kit, um, he's been able to do two hundred holders in one week, yeah. which is like, I mean, it's a fifty-two fold increase in production capacity on your one printer. So, if you consider that. Um, for a hundred dollars, yeah. you're buying fifty-two under threes. In his case, it's a pretty good deal, I think. <laughs> um, so that that was like a really cool story because that's a perfect example of an application. Um, he wants he he designed these parts, mm -hmm. and he needs some way of of making them. But the the volumes are obviously mm -hmm. too low for him to you know outsource the production of this. But it's high enough that it's impossible. To deal with on a 3d printer unless you're at home which he's not he's driving around all yeah. the time <laughs> and so yeah it was it was really amazing to hear like in, ju in just the first week he managed to do <laughs> over the last two years worth of parts <laughs> that's literally insane yeah and uh i guess somewhat unsurprisingly at this point he, he actually bought a second uh quinley upgrade system for his printer um, and so he says while he's away, he was printing 10 batches of 12 hour prints. Um, so that's like about five times as many as he was before. Mm -hmm. um, and he, he like one of the things is batching still works with an automated system. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's really good too when you're when you're away for extended periods of time. But 10 batches of 12 hour prints, that's he's running these machines for 120 hours without even being like present nearby which is pretty awesome yeah um we got a question here actually from sure Bill. he says how long does it take to cool a plate from 60 degrees to release um right now we've got the release set to 29 c um mm -hmm. and at like room temperature it takes about 20 minutes um but there is a mod on our website where you just stick like a five volt fan or sorry, a 24 volt, um, 50 millimeter fan on the bed costs like 10, less than $10 probably. I mean, most of you definitely have the parts already <laughs> <laughs> lying around. If you stick a fan on the bed, it, it halves the time, like that small fan. If you were to put a bigger fan, um, I'm sure you could get it easily like five to eight minutes. It's not too bad when you consider that you've now opened up, uh, like, can if you sleep, you've now opened up another 10 hours of your day to do 3D printing. So it, there's a bit of a trade-off to consider. Um, and one thing to think about when you're doing really small parts, it might not make sense to do one small part and then wait for the release, especially if your part takes like 10 minutes and then the release is taking 10 minutes. Um, for those kinds of things, and, and we've been actually, we have a production run that does that right now is, we, we'll put like six or nine on a bed to reduce the downtime due to cooling. Um, overall, the downtime is like, if you put that fan mod in, it's about 10 minutes to cool down. Um, and then it's about three and a half minutes, I think, to heat back up to 60. So you're getting 13 minutes of downtime. Um, and yeah, the best way to mitigate that is by batching prints, but then there's a bit of a trade-off where um, would you rather batch a ton of prints and um, risk any sort of issues with batching or would you rather have single prints that like when they if they do fail they don't take as many prints with them um, that being said batching has been very reliable on these surfaces as 
demonstrated um, by Jeremy and also just our internal printing. Um, like you can see in his photos, he's batching. So that, that makes the downtime almost negligible. You should also consider that, um, like what is your own personal downtime uh, when it comes to running a printer? If you're near the printer, um, the downtime to get to the printer and remove the parts could be almost zero. But if you're not near the printer, for example, if you're on the road doing sales, like like Jeremy is, or or if you were like me and, and had to go to school, unfortunately, um, <laughs> you your downtime can be a lot longer. Like in some, in, in Jeremy's case, it can be days that he's gone. And in, in my case, it was at least um, eight hours a day when I was at school and, and couldn't ha set up prints to fill that time efficiently. Yeah. Um, you should also consider the impact on your time. You can do all this really complicated scheduling to make sure the printer's always finishing exactly when you're around. Um, but then how much effort does that take? So. <laughs> If you like doing that stuff, go for it. If you're like me and like want the most lazy solution possible, <laughs> I would suggest getting an automated printer. Um, it looks like we've got a bunch more viewers. Um, so in case you don't know what we're building, uh, Leia, <laughs> Leia's putting together the DIY version of our Quinley automated kit. This version is, um, $100 less than the full version, but it includes the same software and also includes like a lifetime key with updates to the software, um, to, to the Quinley software that runs your printer while you're not around. Um, and for this stream only, for the next couple hours, we've got a special discount link that you can use. So make sure to, if you're interested, share that with your friends. This is a flash sale that will be uh, ending once the stream goes away and yeah, we'll be printing, we'll be getting this to print, uh, during this scene, I'm just gonna move us back to the normal. So here's Leia. She's just putting on the last 3d printed part that she printed herself. Oh, yeah. Uh, with the, Quinley. with the Quinley. So maybe we should talk about the anatomy of the kit a little bit. Yeah. Uh, let's make it. There we go. Looking good. Yeah. I think it causes a lot of lag when you zoom. <laughs> Does it? Yeah. I've got the close-up cam. Oh. How's that? Okay. Yeah. We Maybe. can use this one. Here we go. Maybe we should discuss like why we have these uh, cool-looking ramps all over. Oh, yes. Yeah. Do you want to talk about them? Or do I want to talk? I don't know. You guys are going to talk. No, you can talk about that. <laughs> um, well, you don't want them to get stuck inside your printer while you are trying to push them off. Small parts. Um, yeah, small parts. I was putting these on backwards before because I was not sure what they did, but now I know what they do. <laughs> after, after two weeks of working here, you've yeah. learned where the ramps go. Exactly. Um, yes. Is there any other reason for the ramps? No, we just found that with small parts, uh, we found a ton of them piling up like inside the printer, <laughs> which was not ideal. Um, so that's why we've, we've got these ramps. And so all of these parts you'll have access to and you'll be able to modify to suit your needs. I've noticed some people, um, they use the full Quinley, like to change up their ramps or, or like to omit certain ramps that they don't need. Um, but yeah, it's just, we found like, if you're running this machine and you really don't want anything to go wrong, you want ramps so that the parts and the printer junk and everything goes out of the build area yeah. and out of any sort of moving parts. So that's why it's got so much of this cool, futuristic lightning blue shielding yeah, around. Yeah, there you go. Um, <laughs> yeah. So actually, Jeremy Owen says he, he intentionally flips the ramps. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, he showed us that. So Jeremy flips these side ramps. The inside way because he doesn't want the parts like flying out off to the side See, that's what i thought they were for and then they told me i was doing it wrong <laughs> i mean there's no wrong <laughs> that's a good thing jeremy if you get a diy kit and want to design your own specialized ramps you'll be able to oh yeah that's true um but yeah on on for our needs 
it made sense for the parts to just go away. Like, don't get stuck anywhere in any printer, please. <laughs> oh, uh, Thornhill Woodworks just got three. Yeah. Oh, yeah. nice. Very nice. Look forward to seeing you on the Discord there. Yeah, yeah. I'd love. I'd love to see the colors that you do because I want to see it in different colors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you guys can send pictures of things that you've printed, uh, really, we'd like to see it. Exactly. What are you planning to use them for, Thornhill? Yeah. I remember him saying in chat something about he prints a ton of small parts. Okay. Um, let's see if I can find it. Yeah, that'd be fascinating. I mean, I, I love hearing, like, I feel like as such a small company, like, it's pretty amazing how many industries we end up touching with, <laughs> with just this system. And I mean, like, I think most 3D printers, most 3D printing companies, like, that's one of the amazing things about them. Like, you just go onto Altamaker's webpage and they have, like, business cases and there are, like, <laughs> 50 different industries. But even just having only been selling these for six months, um, and now, now we'll see what happens with the new DIY kit, but just seeing, like, how many how people figure out how to use this and how people are figuring out how to take 3d printing to higher volumes like seeing that actually being realized is really yeah, really cool i definitely agree um yeah because honestly and you know i could go into this for hours but i do think <laughs> uh sort of like independently controlled decentralized manufacturing is is where the world has to go if um, I mean, everyone's seen over the last year, like how delicate our supply chains are. And yeah. the only reason they're so delicate is because um, they have to be cheap. Yeah. It's pretty amazing that it's cheaper for me to buy something and have it shipped 2000 kilometers from, from China I than know. it is to go to a local store and buy something. I remember from my old job, we were trying to get some resin 3D prints and it was like 200 bucks if we got it from China, but like from the US, it was like over a thousand dollars. And I was like, bro, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, how can there be such a difference in price just be, because of the location? And I'm closer to the US. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty, it's, it's pretty interesting. Like it is, it is something I think what countries have done to themselves, which is because of the way that manufacturing has been structured into these centralized hubs and economies of scale um you'll end up ultimately with a few like lo locations where all the manufacturing is getting concentrated yeah. and because of economies of scale that you can just drive that cost down um but what's really interesting in terms of the economics of 3d printing is that you don't really get economies of scale and it's very very inexpensive to actually produce a 3d print once you get rid of labor so at most of the cost that comes when you buy a 3d print from somebody is the labor involved with it and the reason it's cheaper to get um, 3d prints from overseas is because the labor is much less expensive overseas and of course in manufacturing hubs government subsidized manufacturing um, but what was interesting when we were doing parts costed on a 3D printer itself, um, we found that the 3D prints cutting out labor, so a 3D printer with Quinley, mm -hmm. um, actually would often come in lower than injection molding those parts. That's and impressive. <laughs> injection molding, you get economies of scale, so your part cost goes down as yeah. your volume goes up. But what was really interesting is the crossover point with automated 3D printing and regular injection molding mm -hmm. is somewhere in the tens to hundreds of thousands. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. <laughs> yeah. And like one of these I'm making in my house mm -hmm. out of a wall plug, like <laughs> next to my bed. And one of them, I have to contract a giant company overseas yeah. and like fit within their production schedule and then wait for weeks for my parts to get yeah, to me that's definitely an issue for i feel like so many people trying to even like when you're prototyping if you have to wait that long to like do something like that it's just you can't you need to if you're prototyping there is still a, like a a timeline that you need to follow otherwise usually you can't get grants or things like that you need to like be able to do it at that moment otherwise you're losing out on money that yeah. you don't have yeah or you're not you yeah you lose that competitive edge as well 
Um, something that was interesting that was told to me um, at a 3D printing conference is a lot of companies have started adopting 3D printers, but they don't like to advertise that they do because it gives them such a competitive advantage in oh. terms of innovation. <laughs> And that I found that really fascinating, but it actually makes sense. Like you wouldn't want to reveal your biggest yeah. weapon. And so I think that's that's something that we'll start to see with automated 3D printing and that, that we kind of already are. Like I sometimes I've noticed a few times like things using 3D printed parts that don't necessarily advertise that they do. Yeah. Like there was this story of, of Tesla, like they ran out of parts or their part was defective. <laughs> And they just quickly subbed in 3D printed parts in directly into their manufacturing line, but they they never really told anyone about it. And of it, was, they. it was discovered like a few months later when Obviously. somebody was repairing their part. But like that kind of application, like imagine the cost to them if their production line went down. Like yeah. it would have been massive. And that's where I see like 3D printing really, especially automated 3D printing mm -hmm. with with Quinley in particular. <laughs> yeah. Um, taking a, a big role in terms of how manufacturing looks like in the future. Because if you're making in the same place that you're assembling or selling, there's no lead time in your in your innovation due to like weird supply chains. And yeah. and like I was saying earlier, right? Like because of COVID, our supply chains, which had to be really, really weak and 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 thinned out as thin as possible in order to remain inexpensive. Yeah completely got overstressed sure. and and it, it's not a robust system because there's two like diametrically opposed forces mm -hmm. there's one is how cheap can we get it and how resilient can they be exactly. and yeah and i think with 3d printing like 3d printing is without labor with quinley is is very very inexpensive yeah and very robust because the like now on, on an Ender 3 upfitted with a Quinley DIY kit, that's going to set you back pretty much, what, $250 total. You now have the first step for taking prototypes to production. Mm -hmm. Like on one Ender 3, you can make dozens or, or even up to a few hundred parts a week if you yeah. want to. And then when you need to make more, you just get a second one. And, <laughs> and it's like very stepwise and very low cost. And it, um, like it, it's kind of like how uh, when people got personal computers, anyone could program and produce commercial yeah. software. You didn't have to be in a company that owned a mainframe for you to be able to write your own software and test your own software. That's a really good analogy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is the uh, PC of 3D printing. Exactly. <laughs> um, we have an interesting uh, use case here, actually, from Thornhill mm -hmm. uh, Woodworks. So he's 3D printing like thousands of single use ring sizing uh oh, parts that so makes he had like five printers going <laughs> printing off these tiny little single use rings oh that they use to size your finger so that makes sense that's something i haven't really heard that's of actually really really good because those would be too. custom too yeah i feel like if you you could send those to people and like they wouldn't have to come to a store or they it'd, it'd be more like single use so like they don't have to touch someone else's ring sizing <laughs> that's true no but it actually is a really good point <laughs> Yeah, I'd be interested to hear why you decided to 3D print them over just, to, I, I don't know if you can buy them or anything uh, in bulk, but that, that is a really interesting use case. That does make sense. Yeah. And and I guess you can make like any level of adjustment that you wanted to. You didn't yeah. have to buy mass produced preset sizes for them. Exactly. That's really interesting. <laughs> Tristan's telling me to stop laughing. <laughs> I'm just enjoying the stream too much. Why do you not like laughing? Next week we'll do a depressed stream just for you. Okay. We'll turn off I all the lights. Turn off all the lights. Yeah. I'll play any music. <laughs> yeah, emo stream. Yeah. I'll dye my hair black. Um. So you've got it all put together. Should we start the calibration? Yeah. Do we want to wash it off first, or should we wash? Oh yeah, it? that's something. Why don't we wash it? Why don't we wash it after, actually? Because okay, okay. we might be touching the bed. That's true. So something to mention about the vapor bed that's included in the in the kit, um, and something that a lot of people run into issues with, is um, you don't want your finger, your maker gunk, 
all over the bed because it, it will interfere. It will interfere a bit with the adhesion. So, um, but it's super easy to clean off. You just use some water and soap. I got the person who has sweaty hands. Yeah, so the gunkiest of, yeah. of maker hands. Um, so, yeah, well, why don't we boot this up and then start calibrating the Z offset. We want that to be dialed in. Otherwise, we're not going to get repeatable prints. Uh, which is important in an automated <laughs> system. Um, okay, and you don't have auto leveling, so we'll have to be. Wait, do you have auto leveling? I feel you like know. no. No. So we'll have to make sure the bed is like very flat and very okay. level. Auto leveling is recommended, but it's not required. I see. I see. It does make your life a lot easier uh, over time. Like. Okay. Look into that. Bed. In the example that I was mentioning before, you know, when I was running it for like yeah. so long that the actual wheels fell off of the yeah. bed on my ender, um, because I had auto leveling, I that's why I didn't oh, notice. Oh, okay. I was it like, actually, how did it still work? Yeah, it actually, like the back wheel, this one fell off. That's insane. Here, I'll show a zoomed in uh, version. But it was like this wheel up here completely came off. And <laughs> the only reason I noticed was because the bed was like the or sorry my prints were had a weird elephant's foot in one corner and I was like oh. what's causing this so that's why auto leveling is recommended because it would see. that would like save your bed from getting damaged okay. um I so yeah have to invest in... maybe you can grab one of the probes from the office <laughs> it's the... just to make it perfect <laughs> yeah just to make it perfect just so you can run it during finals like exactly. last time School, I feel like, is most stressful when you need to print something. So I'm excited for, like, my project design course when I'm going to print everything last minute and it'll actually work out. We, we've <laughs> spoken also to, like, um, print labs. Like, mm -hmm. our, our our previous term co-op, he was on, he was actually on a bunch of the streams, Kevin. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, he, he was you. running UBC's uh, <laughs> print lab and, and he was saying, like, around finals, like, the print lab is just a nightmare. Like he's he's Fair. stayed overnight, and actually, um, we've got a Quinley kit at um, Somerset College, um, and Eric Woolridge, one of the profs there, is doing all sorts of testing on our kit, and and he actually used it in. Um, they were doing this emergency manufacturing drill, and they had our Quinley kit on. It was on a twenty four seven live stream. They had it running. <laughs> Uh, for a couple of days is pretty awesome and their their part storage their part collection bin was amazing it was like a trash bin that's a 3d hue it. and they were just collecting all the parts into that trash bin it was pretty funny um but it, yeah they they were running it for like a, a couple of days at a time which that's really good though. yeah i don't think you can say that for for most printers i don't think you can. yeah um we had a question actually from uh, uh, Schaefer, Kevin Schaefer, I think. Mm -hmm. He's asking about uh, the tilt frame. So we got a new design for the tilt mm -hmm. frame. So he's asking, uh, how does that compare to what we used to have with the aluminum extrusion? Push it forward to me. Yeah. Yeah, we got a beautiful. Um, the biggest mm -hmm. difference is that it's plastic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, the main thing is that it just. Uh, you can print it yourself. It's a bit less strong. Um, yeah. That being said, the file is available in case you want to do a longer and tougher print or, mm -hmm. or print it in a more solid material. Um, the aluminum tilt brackets we use, I like because you can mount them to things. Oh, that's um, and they're, they also provide a bit of a counterweight, um, mm -hmm. which is something to consider. Mm -hmm. um, it might not be, in most applications, might not be required. But um, it's just something to consider. Um, and it's very easy to mount additional things to it. Okay, let's see if I've learned the. Oh, oh we've got split screen. I forgot. Oh. That's cool. You can see my tired face on two locations. I think facing me is fine. I'm okay. just going to calibrate Z now. Which means 
Do you want to carry the string <laughs> while I do this? Okay. Um, what should I talk about? Um, you, well, you're getting this friendly kit to keep, right? Oh, yeah. So why are you uh, planning to bring for that? Okay. I think mostly I will be using it during school just because I think a lot of people have 3D printers, but they're still, like, not everybody has them. So usually I'm the one who has to the print if you're in my group <laughs> and I uh, usually I, I remember for last year we had a rover competition for one of our classes and we had to basically like build a rover and then have it go through an obstacle course on like the last day and I remember we had two really important 3d printed parts that was just basically the front axle wheels that allowed it to turn basically it was just like the pieces that held it so like without those pieces um it obviously would not work and it was like the night before the competition and we were so confident for some reason we we're like oh it's obviously working like everything we can do these awesome turns and everything and then one of our team members somehow crashed it directly into a wall oh. and broke all the 3d printed pieces off yeah. So uh, then, then we had to quickly 3D print everything for that part again. And that was really stressful just because it was like really late. So we weren't sure who would be able to like get it all done before the the competition in the morning. But it ended up working out, but it was still very stressful. I think in that sense, I think for since my bed was kind of shitty, <laughs> it was stressful because I wasn't sure if it was going to stick. So once I have this on, I will not have those issues anymore. This is, this is way as bad <laughs> at the time. It was not a good one. I mean, it was good for like a while, but like, I, I, <laughs> I don't need it anymore is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Something that we worked really, really hard on with the vapor bed is that the properties remain consistent no matter how much printing you do on it. Um, so, and and part of what, what causes that is that you you never have to add glue or tape to it, yeah. so you don't have to worry about it. And uh, in the case that you end up with a bed that, that does change, we also offer like a, a performance guarantee yeah. on the print surface. So like if for some reason I don't know, maybe it wasn't up to spec or something and mm -hmm. it starts, your performance starts changing, we'll, we'll send you a replacement printer. Yeah. Um, that's how confident we are in all the work that we put into developing this material. Yeah, like we test all the beds. I saw the testing today. I was very impressed by yeah. how we do it. I didn't know that's how we did it. Yeah, every, every single bed actually is tested here um, at our facility and, and we test pretty much the um, whole thing most of the area of the bed yeah yeah um, for adhesive for consistency and and for performance mm -hmm. that looks pretty cool <laughs> yeah <laughs> um what else do i want to print i also want to print probably some like character figurine kind of things i really like to paint and stuff so um once i got a 3d printer i realized i could like paint a bunch of characters that um would be like more realistic than just on a piece of paper and I like doing the Groot and the <laughs> Yoda the best they were pretty cute after I was able to just like print them out in PLA and then paint over them with some uh, acrylic paint so it looked really nice after and I think I'll want to do more of those after since I feel like it kind of makes me a lit a little less agitated and it calms me down a bit when i'm painting so it's a de-stressing kind of tool as well would you ever consider um like running a side business off of your 3d printer yeah i think it would be kind of like once i have this all set up i feel like that it kind of makes you think of all the options you could do with a side business i was thinking about like um i could probably if I had time um paint little figurines and then sell them because that'd be really cute and I I think they could sell because I actually practice painting a lot so <laughs> I'd hope they're good at that point um <laughs> there's actually a guy that we have uh reviewing one of our kids honey badger 
who paints his prints too. Yeah, I saw his stuff today and it was actually really cool. <laughs> we yeah. were gonna talk to him and I was kind of excited to just like see what he does with the painting and stuff. <laughs> we actually have a chat with him on one of our previous live streams. Ooh. Uh, if you want to watch. But I'll, I can yeah. also introduce you to James. <laughs> I want to see all his techniques. Yeah, take a look at Honey Badger Print and Paint. They're on YouTube. They they also use Quinley to do these like hundred plus part <laughs> massive <laughs> models. Um, and what's really cool about their use of it is that all of these parts are completely different from one another. It's not yeah. the same part over and over again, which uh, the consistency. It's is a good it's, <laughs> it's a good stress test. Yeah, sure. that's really cool. Man. Let's keep that in mind. Yeah. I was also thinking about um, a chess set because I am trying to learn chess. I'm not very good, so I, I've, I've been trying it on my phone and stuff with people, but I feel like they make it too easy sometimes if they're like, it tells you where you're allowed to go, kind of. Uh, <laughs> so I'm like, I'm not really learning where I'm allowed to go if you're going to tell me where I'm allowed to go. So I want to maybe have a physical set and then I can play against people, hopefully post-COVID times. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. That should be a piece of tape. Just load up all the figures. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> How is it going? It's going all right. I'm just doing the first set of coming. This is awesome. the first round. I was a little stressed to do this part on stream, so I got him to do yeah. it for me. <laughs> Yeah, we had um Colin saying uh like talking about the tilt frame again. Yeah. Um, how do you make sure that the tilt frame or the frame doesn't walk away on you? <laughs> that is a good question. Um with the aluminum frame and the full quinley kit, we provide uh rubber feet. So the that does sound dampening, but it also prevents the printer from walking away. Um with these DIY feet, I would recommend getting rubber feet or felt pads to prevent it from shuffling away. Um, <laughs> but I'm sure someone could quite easily design a completely printed foot that doesn't walk. Uh, yeah. Through vibration. Yeah, these things were designed by Richard, and he knows what he's doing. So mm -hmm. it's a lot of that. They do have a little bit of a curve, so that could dampen a bit of like the vibrations. That is, that yeah. is true. Yeah. And it forces all four feet to be touching. The exactly. It's so like, it's really nice. He's got all these things in mind. Richard oh. just knows. He just knows how to do good stuff. Very thoughtful in terms of yeah. design. We're lucky to have him. <laughs> also, just so you know about. They, like when I was connecting these parts, I had a little bit of an issue with the um, T nuts, but I figured out a good way to do it. Um, basically, it's like really tight between the foot of the actual 3D printer and like the actual screw here, if you can see that. And it basically uh, makes it so it's like a perfect fit, so you know exactly where to put the piece. But the um, T nut doesn't turn perfectly um, when you just do it normally with like screwing it in so it doesn't turn when you're trying to screw it so i put it in first and then i turn it myself and then i put the screw in and it works <laughs> that is one way to do it <laughs> there Which we go watching right now apparently <laughs> <laughs> also um we got we got a suggestion from jordan hill again saying uh crafting is in right now Ooh. market um prints as unpainted and let the clients be out that is oh wait idea. that is that's so true. People are so bored. They definitely would do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll keep that in mind. That's actually really good. Hmm. <laughs> I'll have to think of what are the most popular things that people would want to paint first, though. I bet there's like a, a surplus of 3D printed Yoda heads. Yes. <laughs> in a dumpster somewhere. <laughs> I bet. They could be painted. <laughs> Baby Yodas. Yeah, if you want to get sued by Disney. <laughs> oh, yeah. Exactly. They own, like, everything. Jesus. Oh, we got a question from uh, Kevin. So, are you sharing files from the original so we can mount to extrusions ourselves? Ooh. That's a good question. Um, I don't see why not, because if we release these files, somebody could make a mod to mount the extrusion, so yeah. they might as well. 
We actually have been putting together the files. Yeah, it, we, we are just including the, okay, uh, that's good. the tilt frame. So we attach the 3030 aluminum extrusion. Mm -hmm. and I think we uh, also have designs for 2020, don't we? Yeah, we do have ones for 2020, which we'll be including as well. Mm. Be on That'll be cool. Our resources page, if you're a 3D cube Quinley user, you get access to that, and there's a lot of fun stuff in there. There we go. <laughs> I've given up doing it with the paper. I'm going to do it by eye. <laughs> That's what Dominic did yesterday, too. Yeah. And in terms of the extrusions, if you're buying the DIY kit, that's something you'll have to supply yourself. Uh, it's, we're only supplying the extrusions with the full printing kit. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. But... But again, if you have something else in your house that might work. Yeah, so technically you do that. Go ahead and design your own thing for it. Start with us. <laughs> Actually, we have a Thingiverse account now. You know, yeah. Uh, 3D Cube Thingiverse. So Are you able you, to post? Um, well, I think if they have a cool enough design, we'll just um, kind of like add it to our account saying that like, we approve. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> or so we cute. could uh, have them remix things that we uploaded. Oh, that's true, too. Yeah. That sounds good, then. Yeah, so for example, the dies mount that I uh, created last week for the Previous screen is now available on Thingiverse. Mm. Like, do you ever need to do a dies on an MD3? It's a good stuff there for you. <laughs> uh, your bed is bent in the middle. What? Oh no. Oh, that <laughs> Actually, wait, that makes sense. I feel like it, it that, yeah, that makes That's sense. That's a common <laughs> problem with Enders. We'll upfit it with uh, leveling. I'll level for the center. Okay, that sounds good. I but, think that uh, makes sense though, because I always did feel like it was kind of different in the middle, and I just was like, maybe I'm leveling it wrong. <laughs> no, you're you're fine. <laughs> we'll have to, uh, yeah, we'll have to install auto leveling. But it's got the the nice thing is it's perfectly bad in the middle. Okay. So here, <laughs> in that case, the leveling will be really effective. Okay. That's perfect then. <laughs> Oh yeah, okay, we cool. should be good. Okay. Um so the pie on already the pie is not on yet. Okay. Now it's on. There we go. Cool. Oh. So Leia's just switched on the pie. The Quinley software, the print manager software runs on the pie. Mm -hmm. You can actually see the IP should show up. Yes. Good. In a moment once the pie boots. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to switch this back to a normal screen. Okay. Ah. <laughs> is that a rough time? No, I'm signed <laughs> because I, my head is cut off by this beautiful stream <laughs> only discount code for the DIY Quinley kit. In case you don't know, um, we oh, are yeah, running a bad. special flash sale uh, for the launch of the DIY <laughs> kit, which gives you an additional $30 off. So, um, by now. It's already, yeah, it's already a hundred dollars less uh, than the, the full kit because mm -hmm. now you're putting in some work and we're putting in some work. Um, and yeah, again, the special launch promotion is that we're doing uh, an additional $30 off with that, with that code. So if you know anyone who loves designing things but mm -hmm. hates babysitting their printer and just wants to use their printer as a printer to produce parts, mm -hmm. I would highly recommend sharing this, this stream and, and passing that uh, discount off to them. Yes. Um, Get it for your mom. Your mom might like it. That's She's true. probably really bored at home doing things. Or, or a Father's Day kit. <laughs> yeah, there we go. If, you're, if your dad is, uh, if you hear him cursing out the 3D printers <laughs> in the garage too often, <laughs> get him one of these because you won't have to really touch his 3D printer again. And, there we and they'll go. be safe from the verbal abuse. <laughs> um, I like it. Yeah. Oh, we got Maya as the first Thingiverse follower for 3D systems. Oh. And, yeah. Make your way over to the Thingiverse. And, um, if you don't know, if you haven't heard about the changes we're making to this panel, um, we're planning to run a lot of high volume or, or, or really long endurance tests on Quinley outfitted printer. So the stream last week where we set up a Quinley printer with a $300 dive <laughs> extruder and we're planning, oh, 
which we're doing a, a thousand hour print test um, to see how the dyes extruder performs at the beginning of the thousand hours and how it performs at the end of the thousand hours of printing and, and whether it actually might be a worthy upgrade um, when when you are running your machine this hard, which yeah. is only reasonable with, with an automated system. So um, make sure to follow the YouTube if you're if you're interested, even even if you're not picking up a printing for yourself, but if you're interested in seeing like capabilities or, or even learning about other 3D printer products and like how they could apply to mass manufacturing 3D printing, I highly recommend uh, subscribing and, and sharing this channel because, but yeah, we've got some pretty interesting experiments in store. Um, this is the part of Mother's Day. <laughs> yes. I, I really wanted to say this, but like, if you missed Mother's Day? Yes, I... Forgot to get a Yeah. Actually, you know what you can do? I was thinking about it. Because you're, if you miss Mother's Day, you can get yourself a DIY Quinley and then print her so many gifts. Oh, that's her. good, actually. Yeah, Maybe her. I should do that. I kind of miss Mother's Day. You well, a present for it. Or you could set it, actually, the thing, the next thing about it is you can set it up at her house and send me <laughs> gifts to automatically be printed. Oh, that'd be like a surprise for it. Oh, that'd be so cute, actually. Yeah. Just a little surprise every day. Cool. <laughs> just plop it in and just send the parts over. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Occasional um, gifts. Oh, yeah, apparently the audio is going a bit oh. weird. I think the fan on the fan is maybe uh, passing me back the mic and that. Uh, that towel, please. Yeah. Or I guess you needed to clean the yeah, bed now. Okay. Do you want to give it a wash, and then we can start the print. There we go. Question: Is the software that controls the automation paid? So that's uh, for those of you who are just joining us. That is one of the big announcements of tonight. Is that we've decided to structure our software differently. The basic version, which is all you need to have to run your Quinley DIY kit or full Quinley kit 24-7 remotely is going to be free uh, forever. Um, and this includes updates. The way we've decided to change up the software is um, for those more enterprise users who might have a big farm of printers and might need special integrations for commercial purposes, those will be paid, but you'll get the full kind of if you've already got a Quinley, you, you know what it's what it's like. Um, but you'll get the full 24-7 automated management um, included in the free software that, that comes with the purchase of a Quinley kit. Um, I guess we can also talk about things that we're planning for. Oh, thank you, Stephen. <laughs> for the future, um, there's also planned to be put into the free software um, because you're actually directly working oh, yeah. on one of those features. <laughs> um, we've already hinted at, um, we've been working with existing Quinley users on a brand new, uh, more easy to use UI. Um, but Leia, part of the reason we brought her on two weeks ago was to work on a very specific feature um, that we're pretty excited about mm -hmm. that'll be coming out during the summer. What is that feature? I'm going to get some camera integration. Yeah. So. That's like the first step, basically. But um, we want to basically have like it so you can at least watch your your printer go while you're printing and not be standing over it like how I usually do when I'm watching the first layer. Um, but <laughs> basically having that integrated into the UI, and yeah. then after that, we want to implement a failure mode machine learning model, basically that will allow you to be alerted at least when you're print might be failing, which I actually was trying to do in like a personal project, but I just literally didn't have enough data. But now that I'm working here and I've access to like a billion 3D printers, I can get a lot of data and then hopefully make that model. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the most frequent requests in the Quinley software that we are presently like developing is, is the addition of, of having PyCam right integrated into the UI. Um, and part of it is, it's just nice to have peace of mind to be able to look at your prints. Um, even though I know I've, I've run my printer for days without having to look at it, but 
it's still nice to be there. And then we do actually plan on having um, failure detection in the free basic version of um, the software. And it'll be a bit more advanced. Um, like it'll have different failure modes that we're planning to work on. Um, I think we'll be doing a more formal announcement once mm -hmm. we have actual um, tech demos put together. Yeah. But part of part of like the last step in the chain to automated 3D printing is there's the printing itself, which has long been automated. Mm -hmm. Then there's the part removal and, and file management, which is what Quinley automates. Mm -hmm. And then because there's no operator there checking and removing every single part, yeah. you need some way of doing quality control exactly. and management. And that's that's what we're planning to do um, with the camera integration and then eventually with, with the uh, failure detection mm -hmm. as well. Um, and so, yeah, that should be, that'll be really exciting um, once we put that out. And, and that'll be rolled out to everyone with the Quinley kit. Um, because, yeah, I think it's one of the core things that you need when you're actually looking at 3D printing as a manufacturing process. Who knows, looking at the printers. What does that say, Lila? Looking at their printers you hear them clicking. Oh, <laughs> who keeps looking at their printers when you can hear them clicking in the other room? <laughs> oh my god. It sounds like the, uh, what's it, thermal noise. Yeah, oh. or the beeping noise, yeah. Oh my god, nightmare. Wait. I never heard thermal noise until I came here. I didn't know what it was. <laughs> <laughs> That's embarrassing. I was, I was so confused. I was like, why is it happening? What do I do? Oh, probably from switching. Yeah. Yeah, it was like a really weird material and I was printing at really high temperatures. Yeah. And then I didn't turn off like the cooling, I think, for one of the the settings in Pura and I was just like super confused. <laughs> yeah, I guess we weren't tuned to print. It's actually pretty impressive. We've on the vapor bed we've we've printed things like um Hips, nylon, uh, polycarbonate, we actually really like. It, it performs super well, even on the open air ender. Um, and But that requires like really messing around with the, the firmware to let you get to those temperatures. And we actually have a whole stream on it where we went through, Steven tested, who's off screen, he tested a ton of materials. And we went through like how to mod your ender three so that you could get your build plate up to 140 degrees. <laughs> Uh, and it was pretty amazing, like, um, the amount of materials you're able to print on a stock Ender 3 with the Quinley and uh, E3D D6. Like, it was kind of surprising what you could get out of, like, a $300 machine. Like, um, yeah, it was amazing. He printed these massive polycarbonate parts Ooh. that you would think, like, I guess on any normal build surface, that uh, polycarbonate would, would warp a ton yeah. with it. The adhesion between the vapor and the polycarbonate is so good when yeah. it's hot that we've printed it with no enclosures. It's pretty amazing. Um, yeah. You've given it a clean? I think so. Cool. Do you want to start a print? I think there's, um, if you get an IP, there should be one. Here. Yeah, but the IP got hidden because I went into the menus. Oh, okay. <laughs> just gonna re I'm just going to start the Raspberry Pi. Okay. Okay. I can remember the IP as well. Yeah. Oh, okay, good. Good, good. I think while we're waiting for all that to boot up, I'll uh, talk about another customer use case. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sure. Um, so let's talk about fish fpv um he's a member of our discord and he's using quinley to produce um they're called chip clips they're basically these plastic clips that you use to keep a chip yes. bag closed chip clip it's pretty self-explanatory <laughs> yeah. but he, he's printed a whole ton of them uh since he's gotten the kit that's pretty amazing like yeah there's He's got a full bag of them. And I think these are printed in PETG. Um, so this is like one of the 
few customers we've got that that are doing high volume printing and type G on the ender. I, feel free to correct me, but I believe we had a we had a discussion a while ago when when he's getting set up that he's wondering if type G would work and. Yeah, he's been printing a ton of things. Well, clearly it does. Yeah, yeah, clearly it does. Uh, I'd be curious how many he's printed total. I could I could go look at our Discord messages, but I know um, shortly after he got the kit, he, he he's printed a few hundred so far. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty amazing. Like awesome. this this definitely is starting to look like uh, like something you'd see come off a of manufacturing yeah, line, like these sure. quantities. Like I could see that at IKEA. I see it so close to me and I definitely bought chip bags clips from it before. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty cool. It's it's awesome to see like actual production and yeah. consider that it's it fits within like two square feet. Exactly. It's just so small you could literally put it anywhere. Yeah. Well, but, uh, he, got, he did 600 of those clips nonstop. 600 <laughs> nonstop production run. That's pretty <laughs> awesome. On a single printer. Like, just like... Yeah, I don't know. It's it's really cool for me to imagine just giving a person access to their own. I mean, that's that's why <laughs> I started working on this is give, giving given yeah giving per, uh, individual access to their own production line. Like you've yeah. given them access to hardware prototyping, and now you're giving them access to a production line, actually pushing that. And and one day we'll never have to leave our house. And we can make everything. <laughs> that's, that's bringing me back to 2012 3D printing days. Right? Everyone's 3D printing things at home. But being able to spread out manufacturing is, is far more resilient. And actually, an interesting perspective I learned about is it's actually um, could even be considered like a, a matter of, of national security. Because oh. if you think about how much of our stuff comes from other countries yeah. and you know those not gonna say any names but you know how politicians are they might decide to cut off certain products um as we've seen and so if your country can't produce those products or if you can't produce those products yourself you're kind of hooped yeah. when it comes to that stuff um and so yeah one guy i was talking to who was former military was he had a really interesting perspective that being able to manufacture a home is is considered like a matter of national security because now you're not giving these in some cases countries in some cases companies mm -hmm. leverage over an entire like need that your citizens have so i thought that was like a really interesting case for yeah. for for building um a decentralized manufacturing system and and i think like i said i think 3D printing, automated 3D printing is, is one of the least, as we've shown, is one of the least expensive ways to do that. Um, and Quinley literally gets it into the hands of individuals, which I don't think you can really say, like laser cutters are still, they're kind of pro level, a few thousand dollars, like individuals can get them, but this is literally affordable. Like, yeah, laser but, cutter still takes up quite a bit of space, even yeah. if you do have the money to buy it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is something that someone in high school could purchase. Like exactly. it's it's really, yeah. The idea is to bring down um, the any sort of barriers to producing, actually producing your ideas and getting your ideas out to market. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and at the same time, you get a really fun toy to play. <laughs> exactly. I think the high school thing is like really good too. Like most tools you can't really get a hold of when you're in high school because like they're too dangerous or like you just don't have the money but like 3d printers are decently priced compared to most things like waves and like stuff like that and like you can actually oh well, you can hurt yourself and like not like on a lathe or on like something that's really sharp and yeah. gonna take your arm <laughs> and the the flexibility of the stuff you can produce is also uh, I guess relative to the knowledge you need, it's also much higher. Yeah, for sure. Um, and it's it's easy. It's easy to print off a thing. Mm -hmm. um, and now we've made it easy to print off hundreds of things. Uh, and really inexpensive because it doesn't take up any of your time. Yeah. Just trying to pull up some of these comments. <laughs> 3D Jack really is a jack of all trades. 
<laughs> master of none. <laughs> Just kidding. He's a master of a few. He's a master of quite a few. Um, do you have the IP, Steven? Yeah, 187. It's, it's in the um, box as well. Okay. So we just got everything connected up. Leia's already flashed. Oh, sorry. I put your phone. 1.87? Yeah. Oh my god, I can't see. You got 1.17. <laughs> there you go. And then port 88. Oh, right, right, right. All right, we're just getting connected up here. We're gonna send some for it. Okay. So I just gotta show it on screen oh, too, awesome. right? Oh, oh thank you for bringing the monitor closer. Yeah. Is there a screen for that? I don't know. It's on the I will whip one up. Oh. <laughs> I'll whip one up real fast. So what we're doing is um, we're connected up wirelessly to the Quinley that we've got here. There's a Raspberry Pi hidden just under these panels. If you want to, I'll just switch to the second cam. You don't have to zoom speed. Oh. oh, it's impossible to see. It's actually hidden right under this panel here. Oh, yeah. Um, and it just plugged directly into the Ender 3. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly show my display oh, wow. oh my goodness <laughs> that is something that is oh, there we go. that is something okay wow there's so many of us <laughs> so our queue is totally infinite <laughs> yeah but we have infinite quinleys right now <laughs> So here's the, uh, this is the current interface. This is not the new one we're working on. Um, you can see, oh, it's not connected to the Ender. We should check that it's plugged in. That might be important. So we should make sure that USB cable is, it's not plugged in. Oh, that's in. not. Yeah. Sorry. USB cable needs to be plugged in. Uh, yeah, more, more yeah. likely that happened than you think. Yeah. So often. Checking the USB cable. Or it's just hanging in, but like it's not actually fully in. Okay, Steven. <laughs> happens to me. <laughs> happens to me. Just gonna... Plug it in here. Oh, we got some. Hmm? I'm still doing the infinity. Oh, <laughs> oh shoot. Really Sorry. Let me fix this. Okay. Pretty funny. How's that going to be for us? It's causing the entire uh, stream to lag. <laughs> no. This is not fully in there. I don't know what the thing is, but... Oh, it wasn't in the pie? It was, but like it was like barely in. Yeah. Always make sure that the pie is connected fully to in. the ender. <laughs> that is step, <laughs> step one. Okay, here we go. Take two. There we go. Are you zoomed in on this? Um, you've got the VCAM. Oh, yeah, I'm on Got the full view on me. Sweet. Okay, we'll just have to wait for turn on the pie. Can you turn it on? No. Yeah, um, now it's on. And then we'll just wait for it all to boot up. Sweet. Okay, we can stay on the main cam then. Uh, yeah, so in case you're just joining us, again, <laughs> we've got... 
Um, this is a launch of the DIY Cleanly Kit, just the, the DI version of our full um, Ender 3 automation upgrade uh, that includes hardware and software. There's no software subscription. It's all included, includes pretty much updates for life. Um, mm -hmm. And there are a lot of really cool features planned for the summer that will just help make making use your Ender 3 um, much, much easier. Uh, okay, I, I got it. It's connected. Sweet. There we go. So <laughs> uh, if you plug the USB <laughs> in correctly, uh, it'll work. <laughs> everything will connect correctly too. If you don't, then you'll I was be sweating. Me. <laughs> I was like, what could have possibly gone wrong on this thing? All right. Oops, I'm showing your stream stats. One second. <laughs> All right, here we go. There we go. So I'm just going to boot up the UI, refresh it. Um, this number, the URL, is actually displayed right on the LCD, so it mm -hmm. makes it quite easy to know how to connect to it. Yeah. Um, and there we go. We see our Ender 3, which we're calling default today. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know yeah, we, we could name it. Yeah, you can name it. <laughs> Leia, wow. Leia's Pro. There we go. <laughs> okay. There you go. Oh, wow. Leia's so Pro. Personalized now. <laughs> Very personalized. Yeah, you should. I don't know. Maybe we could show sneak peek the new UI if uh, someone sends me a link. But I see it too. I that see one's it. going to be much more personal oh, uh, and that's... much cooler. What, the interactive one? Yeah. Yes, ask for it. I want to see it. Um, so you've just got the calibration cube loaded? Yeah. Okay, you might want to load in the filament, I think. Sweet. So as Leia sets up her DIY Quinley oh. kit, um, Right now, we've just got two files loaded in here, the test print and the calibration cube. So are you planning to mass produce these calibration cubes? <laughs> no, but what I is the a plan? little one and I thought it was cute. There's a little one right there from the old. Thing. Oh, this one's really nice. Yeah, so I hope it turns out even better <laughs> now that I have a better bed. That was with a glass bed, though. That wasn't with my garbage one. That one would probably fall off. <laughs> so yeah, I want to really make sure roasting, it's actually really roasting the glass. <laughs> well, I have a better bed now. I can roast how I choose. Actually, this one looks like it was printed on. Oh, no, it's printed on glass for sure. Yes. Yeah. If I use the other one, it would have been not. Good. Well, you, it'll be nice because this will have a glassy finish as mm -hmm. well. So it should be pretty similar. Yeah. yeah. So how many uh, thousands of uh, Prints are you planning to do of this calibration cube? I guess we could enter <laughs> some um, enter some absurd quantity. To do, yeah, let's do a cube of these. But is there a set of directions that comes with the kit? Um, yeah, Thornhill, there will be um, kind of a, there's what's included in the kit, and then there'll be what'll be additionally needed. And and the main thing that you'll need additionally is just sourcing your own uh, Raspberry Pi. We have found that. Pi threes actually also work, um, and we're we're trying to get the software uh, a bit more optimized to work on even lower spec Pis. However, um, something to note is, if you do run on a really low spec Pi, uh, you might end up once the camera integration comes out, you might end up with issues uh, around that because really low end Pis have have trouble with camera. Um, this is something you'll see also on Octoprint. It just their I think their hardware encoding is not good enough. Um, so just consider that. We recommend a um, Pi four, uh, two gigs of RAM. But like I said, you could run it on an Pi three pretty well. Um, I think something interesting we haven't talked about yet is sustainability and three D printing. Um, one of the big kind of advantages we've learned over the years is um, just how much more sustainable manufacturing on 3D printers is than, than traditional manufacturing. Um, we've, we've spoken to some people who have worked with even injection molding and 
and learn that some production runs, even with IM, which is considered like massive throughput, um, you'll end up with up to 40% wastage by weight. And part of that is because IM has a lot of um, additional things required to work the mold, like sprues and, and those gates and stuff. Yeah. Like you'll see when you, I don't know if you've ever bought like those car figurines or like that you <laughs> assemble yourself and like half the plastic is the, 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 yeah. the sprues and the, I forgot the I know name. what you mean. I can envision it. I just yeah. don't know what they're called. I know the ones that go up to the part are called sprues. And then there's there's a special name for the like the, the thick ones that go oh, okay. all the way around. <laughs> yeah. And then gates are the holes. Oh, okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Sprues, runners? Oh, runners. Yeah, <laughs> runners is what I'm thinking of. Um, whereas with 3D printing, like by weight, you have almost no wastage. The, yeah. the only real waste generated by prints are when you have a raft. Um, which is typically something you use when your surface isn't adhesive enough. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, in a lot of cases on vapor, you you don't have to use a raft. We actually try to avoid rafts because it produces post processing, um, or a skirt too, which you use for priming. And a skirt weighs almost nothing. Like, yeah. I've I tried to weigh one, and my scale was not <laughs> <laughs> like it's literally fractions of a gram yeah. to a part that might be a couple. Uh, could be like you know hundreds of grams yeah that makes sense <laughs> so you end up with like 99.8 percent material usage assuming that your prints are successful so once you've got everything dialed in um you have very minimal wastage and that's part of the beauty of just additive manufacturing in itself so yeah exactly like yeah being able to scale up additive means you get to scale up that sustainability mm -hmm. that it provides um and then one of the other real cool benefits of it is additive manufacturing is slow. Um, it's slower than injection molding, but because it's so inexpensive, uh, like, cause you can essentially start your own production line and Ender and the DIY Quinley kit is under 250 bucks total. Um, you, you, it's slow, but you can, you can, there's no cost up front. Um, relatively speaking to, mm -hmm. to other types of manufacturing yeah. and that makes it like really easy to scale exactly to your demand exactly. so if if you're selling 10 things a day you buy enough printers to produce 10 things a day exactly um whereas if you were selling 10 things a day and you had to injection mold you'd buy a machine <laughs> that can make you 10 uh, 10 things like every two seconds exactly and if like you are just trying out a new business or something at least you are only down like maybe like you just print to how many you get orders for you don't have to like get a whole injection molding um contract with someone and then be like yeah i want a thousand even though i don't even know if it's gonna work and, and yeah. nobody's gonna buy them yeah and you're <laughs> your part cost is ridiculous like sometimes these these molds cost tens of thousands of yeah. dollars so if you you could end up paying like a few hundred bucks per part including mold design including <laughs> designing your part to a mold that's not to say that there isn't some 3d printer specific design that you can do but it, it's much more flexible like mm -hmm. you can make crazy things with the 3d printer that you can't imagine with a mold that's true yeah, Jeremy Owen said he priced out a simple mold for injection molding in the U.S. It cost 10 to 15 k. Oh my god. 10 to 15 k. Yeah, and that was probably an aluminum mold which he would use for low run, which mm -hmm. is is still like ridiculous because he's yeah. talking about a few hundred parts, which means he's paying tens of dollars <laughs> per part. Uh, yeah, that's yeah, but with 3D printing, it's like with automated 3D printing, it's the cost of your machine uh divide by the number of parts you make so that that's easy your machine's only 300 bucks uh -huh. so as soon as you make over 300 parts you're already at under a dollar per part and then True. material is so cheap because yeah, you can like actually so cheap <laughs> compared it's to ridiculous else. yeah <laughs> it's not as cheap as pellets but that's i think where some of the crossover comes in yeah that makes sense um, and I think as 3D printing becomes higher and higher volume, we'll see a, a pressure to make the material much cheaper. Or we'll see pellets come mm -hmm. to 3D printing, which would be really cool. <laughs> um, so do you want to sneak peek the, the UI that's on the yeah. bottom of the uh, Of the dock? dock? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Why don't we get the print started okay, first? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that would be a good one. Yeah. Okay, so I've got... <laughs> 
<laughs> I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I've got just our old UI here, which is what everyone's currently on. I'm going to print some calibration cubes mm -hmm. and I'm going to, how many do you want, Leah? <laughs> Feel like. One. Oh, okay. <laughs> how many do you want? I don't know what you choose. I'll put like 25. Okay, that's a lot. That sounds good. That should be fine. <laughs> That's a, that's yeah, that's what I love. You just say, I want 25 things and then it will start printing and you just come back a, a day later and you'll have 25 calibration cubes. I'll give them to all my friends now. <laughs> okay. They'll be like, yeah. wow, this looks not useful to me, but that's okay. Well, we can, we can also use the uh, built-in abort print feature oh, yes. in order, so in case you don't want all 25 of okay. those. <laughs> I have much experience with that because of the material testing I was doing. It's actually kind of nice to have like an abort printer like that. Yeah. My friends seem to like getting benchies instead of calibration cubes. <laughs> they think they're a bit cooler. Yeah, they are <laughs> cooler than a cube with ladders on it. Done that one. This is like <laughs> taking me back to preschool. <laughs> <laughs> it's XYZ. <laughs> The same part as me. About one. Okay, so Jeremy says that the part he's molding is about one dollar in filament. Oh. So I guess for the molds, not including production cost, you would have had to make fifteen thousand parts to get to one dollar, which is pretty high. Yeah. What we found is like a like a normal break even. Smaller parts, yeah. Smaller parts break even at lower quantities, but then big parts like. It, it really depends on the shape of the part too. Like Jeremy Owens, his part, oh, here, I'll pull it back up. Yeah. Um, these clips are very easy to mold. Like you could just do a simple single parting face two half mold. You might not even need like a, since the bottom is flat, you might not even need, like it might just be a flat mold, yeah. which would be that would also really be. inexpensive. Yeah. Um, not all parts are like that. Oh yeah. <laughs> Imagine how how much a mold for two interlocking donuts would cost, oh, yes. <laughs> or chain mail. It'd be a bit a bit more than that. Um, so if we go back to our, we see that it's printing. It's on. It's finished zero of twenty five, and we can see <laughs> now the uh, the temperatures are heating up. And it should start printing any second now. I think once this comes back to 210, oh no, once it goes up to 215, it should print. Um, yeah, should I give people a sneak preview of the new UI? Okay, this is a super sneak preview. This is something we're uh, working on for the next Quinley update. Oh, you haven't seen it yet? No. Oh, that's so exciting. Okay, <laughs> Leia's first preview too. Cool, cool. That looks all right. The Z offset is a bit high, but leveling by eye. I'll call it good. <laughs> um, here we go. So this is the new UI. We've shown our members of our Discord because they actually helped uh, provide feedback for this. So here it is. So we've got the overview, which is just your printer. We've got the pause, suspend, the board. Um, this is where the camera is going to go. Um, and eventually you'll have the stats like with the failure detection uh you'll have temperatures as well setting temperatures pretty basic stuff uh, you'll be able to send g code directly to the machine which you already can and then you'll have some settings here um then we've changed up how the queue looks so you can see your printer yeah you'll be able to drag and drop them yeah and then we are also planning to reorganize how the uh, files go together. So you'll have things like being able to create folders, being able to upload multiple files at once, um, and also being able to 
All right, select files and add multiple files to the queue. So that's also something we're working on. That's a super secret sneak preview. <laughs> Yeah, and this will be for the basic version. Cool. Um, Everyone's just stunned in the chat. They're like, "Oh, really?" <laughs> well, there's no one saying anything. They're lost. Oh, I see. Wow. <laughs> chat, chat being silent. You mean? Yeah. It'd be curious. Yeah. Let, let us know what you think. Like, this was actually done in direct co co cooperation with the uh, members of our Discord. So, um, if you ever want to have input on, on how the Quinley product works, like, we, we try to get a lot of feedback from the community. Because um, ultimately, you guys are the ones who are going to be using this and want to make sure that it works well for you guys. All of his day presents. That's that's a good point. Kevin says that these could be Father's Day presents. I think so. Like at least you won't be late this time. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> if you get it for Father's Day. That's true. Yeah, you've got Father's Day presents for the next twenty five years. I guess. Wow. <laughs> yeah. If you want to print them. Um. Oh, this one's bigger. Yeah. They said they wanted twenty five. I was wow. Amazing. I thought it was cuter. I do like the seventy five percent. Baby. <laughs> Will it work on a Tronxy XY2 Pro? Um, right now, we don't have Express support for it. Um, but if the Tronxy XY2 Pro uh, runs Marlin, it should be, it'll be something that uh, that we should be quite easy to support in the future. Like if, if that's a printer that you have a lot of and you want us to support, um, definitely like leave a comment or, or go in the discord and, and bug us about it because we are always looking for, um, new printers to, to support. And one of the nice things with the DIY kits are that it'll be much easier to, to roll it out to new machines as time goes on, because you guys obviously can, can do the parts yourself. Mm -hmm. Hmm? Oh, the filament and stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, in case you guys are just joining us, because I, I see that uh, we actually have most of the viewers here are, haven't been since the beginning. Um, this is the Quinley 2, or the, the, the Quinley kit for Ender 3 DIY version, um, which is $100 less than the original Quinley that we launched back six months ago. Um, and it's, yeah. Right now, with this special discount code, uh, it's a hundred dollar upgrade that will let your Ender Three run twenty four seven. Um, so I've got it quickly on my Ender Three, and I would say since I put it on, um, I've basically been able to use it maybe two or three times as much as I normally would, especially with work. Yeah, so it's like a hundred dollar upgrade that will be the equivalent of you running two or th buying two additional ender threes so if you think about it that way it's, it does end up being well worth it um and like i said we've, we've had some of our customers who are away from their printers a long time um or for multiple days um like jeremy owens for example he it took him on a standard ender it took him a year to print 200 parts for his job and ever since he got the Quinley, it took him a week to print 200 more parts. <laughs> so it's definitely, if, <laughs> yeah, if, if you don't have time to babysit your printer constantly, and if you're interested in taking your, like, 3D printed um, ideas out of just fun prototypes that you make for yourself and um, want to mass produce them and, and even sell them, like, because it's automated, this is like the perfect side business machine. Like I can just imagine how many Etsy stores. Um, I mean, we interviewed a bunch of them and they, they all run 3D printers and being able to add this like would increase their throughput and they would be able to run it completely as a side business if they yeah. wanted to. Especially during COVID and everything, like people are definitely just like thinking up a lot of things that they can do in their like time at home. 
Yeah. And, like, if you can just, like, make a side business out of something you already have, why not? We have media men saying that there's a, an Ender 3 clone out there that may be compatible with the Twin. I mean, if it runs Marlin, it probably will be. We're we're trying. One of the things we're working on now is is trying to come up with a generalized way to talk to printers. Um, for the Ender three, like right now, Quinley supports uh, fifteen different firmware vari or fifteen different hardware variations. Just because the Ender three itself, there's no such thing as like an Ender three. <laughs> there are like three Ender threes that all have different versions of components. So. That was a really big challenge, and that's something that you'll see in Quinley that um, a lot of effort has been put into for it to just work when when you plug it in. Um, we're actually constantly spending time looking at different mods, looking at different just Ender stock Ender variations, and making sure that the system is robust enough to be able to handle those different changes. Um, yeah, like on our site. There's this really ugly, massive, uh, like flow diagram that that tells you what firmware version you have to pick based on like when you bought your Ender, what type of USB port it has, all sorts of stuff. Yeah, because there are just that many Enders out there, and because automation has to be really reliable and really yeah. specific, um, or well, normally it is, but we are, we're trying to expand it so that it's really reliable but not specific to any particular printer. Oh, he's talking about the Neptune Two. Oh yeah, okay. Which are sold out right now. Oh. <laughs> on to on has the exact sentiment that we're trying to convey here. You can sleep and wake up with new prints. <laughs> I was saying earlier, in, like way earlier in the stream, how on my Quinley, like when these guys working here send me parts to print, like at midnight. I just, I check my phone and I upload them to my Quinley and I don't even look, I like, don't even go to the room with the printer just because I'm so tired. Sorry, Mateo. Yeah. And, just, and then I'll wake up in the morning and I'll have like six batches of prints done and it's just so nice and just bring them into work. Like, it's, it's, it's definitely made me like using my 3D printer a lot more because, yeah, like, there's always that, you know, the sense of dread when there's a big project yeah. and you're like, how much time am I going to have to spend calibrating this machine? That's how I feel every time I use my printer. Yeah. Especially with that bed. Oh my god, I can't stop talking about it. it actually, I didn't want to print anything like all year. I wanted to like fix it all in the summer, but then my friend came with, to me with that one project and I was just stressing out the entire yeah. time. I was like, I was going to fix this later. <laughs> it'd be it'd be good to hear from any of you watching if you've ever had a project like where you're stressing out <laughs> about like just the volume of prints that you have to do. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I remember having a project where I just had to print tiny little keychains, and I was what I was doing is I was playing the video games, and I was <laughs> watching the keychains. But like when the keychains started failing, I was torn between like do like switch my screen stop the print and come back with what looks like this is yeah. critical stuff very critical and it was just stressful whereas with Finley you know just <laughs> they just keep on coming out <laughs> and the first time you wake up to a file of 3d prints different feeling right. Right. Yeah. at my house yeah if, if you guys are uh it's really helpful for us to know um, what kind of printers you guys are running in your print farms because that, that'll help us know where to focus next in terms of rolling out Quinley. So I do have Tronc CXY2 Pro on on the list just because it's been mentioned so much. But yeah, it'd be awesome to uh, to know. Oh, thank you for the congratulations on the product launch, Media Man. Uh, have a good night. <laughs> Yeah, thank you for staying around in the stream. Um, and if you want to catch the next stream, make sure that you uh, subscribe to this channel because we plan on doing uh, all of our product launches on stream and we have a lot of things lined up over the summer. And if you haven't seen our last stream, uh, we're also going to be doing like endurance product tests and trying to find out what products go well with 
Quinley Automation and and just for mass printing in general. Like, <laughs> what products provide the most consistency? Uh, yeah. We'll be putting up a, a stream after this uh, on our Twitch, if you want to follow it at 3D Loop on Twitch, um, where we'll be doing the thousand hour test for the um, Dyes Pro Extruder and Hot M, just to see like how it holds <laughs> up after a thousand hours of printing. Um, and we actually got some pretty interesting information from the Dyes guys since we did the stream. So yeah, we're. I think we're going to be factoring some of that in, but it is important. Like, it's pretty amazing that you can pull off production on an Ender 3 just because it's yeah. like the cheapest printer. Yes. Uh, not the cheapest. It's like, what was the one that Jack had? Like that mini that was like $99. Oh, was so fun. cute though. That one, <laughs> that one I would not recommend using for production, but like the Ender 3 definitely yeah. is a workhorse machine at a really affordable price. Like, I, th I think that's a pretty amazing thing to pull off, just just being able to run production off of one of these. Um, but yeah, we're always hoping to learn like what what else is being used. Like I know lots of people have farms with Prusas, lots of people have farms with like Prusa minis sold out because a lot of people on Etsy wanted to use them for print <laughs> farms. Yeah, and they're like still sold out. Just one for now. 330 by 330. Oh my. That is like. What size is that? That's similar to CR10, I think. 310 by 310. CR10 is 300. I thought it was 310. Maybe 310 if you don't include the, uh, the clips. Right. 330 by 330. That one's pretty big. That's the big boy. <laughs> I mean, we're, we are we are planning to roll out. Uh, we want to know what what sizes are most common because we are planning to roll out uh, some different sizes. Just oh, he wants uh, okay, yeah. The SKR Mini. A bunch of people have actually asked us about it as well, and that is something I've got one of these boards at home right now. <laughs> Please, <laughs> Tristan. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, if you ask like that, I'll have to make an exception. Are you not happy enough with what we already sent you? <laughs> Tristan's got a super, super secret review kit for something else that's coming up. Oh, oh it's water cool. Yeah. How fast can you cool that print bed? That would be amazing because imagine like the reset cycle yeah. and that would be ridiculously fast. Yeah. His lips are sealed. <laughs> I have considered, like, what's the cost trade off of water cooling? Like, imagine water cooling your enders so that you could get the reset faster. I mean, you're already, like, with the Quinley kit, you're definitely already getting, like, two or three times. Yeah. And now you're saving, like, probably an hour a day like that last 10 percent you're spending another 100 something 200 dollars yeah that. i think when i was doing like just the material testing a lot of the time was just like letting it like heat up and cool down so like maybe it would be worth it if you're doing like something like that too well if you got like a little spritz gun to like <laughs> mist it and then like yeah it cools down you know? like a swamp cooler yeah <laughs> Kevin Schaefer, are you still recommending the vapor bed go directly onto the sheet bed or can it go on a steel sheet? Um, if you're talking about the Ender 3, we would still recommend it on the heat bed because the Ender 3's magnetic plate that it comes with warp or expands a lot with heat. Um, and the auto leveling doesn't necessarily keep up with it one to one. So you might end up getting like really varying auto leveling um results over time so it is recommended not to do because then you have heated bed steel sheet or heated bed magnet sheet steel sheet um uh, adhesive layer and then vapor and all of those have different expansion coefficients and like 
Every yeah. time you cycle, that's going to be in a different spot, and it depends also where your probe is probing to. I would say if you're using a steel sheet with a BL touch, you might be okay because it's probing to the top of the vapor surface. But I would just also keep in mind that that surface is going to be moving with heat cycles. Um, so just be aware, like there, there is a bit of risk of things shifting over time. Um, we did do quite a bit of testing with a magnetic plate, like way back over a year ago now, like last January, or, or actually it was before Stephen even joined. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> and it was very inconsistent, was, was the findings. But I don't know, maybe the magnetic beds have gotten better. Like, I would definitely... I mean... Pulled mine off, but it's kind of a ball now. Yeah, this one. No, 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 like the actual like part peeled off with, with some of them. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. Like, it was like Let's in see. a ball. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> Probably you don't need in the that track. anymore. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the bed is mix six. We actually experimented with mix six. That never cools down. It's mix six. We tried buying some mix six for a different test, and it came like all dented and damaged. It was really surprising. Like it was completely out of spec. Yeah, because mix six is supposed to be the flattest, like super flat aluminum. And it came like dented, and it looks like it was cut on like a table saw, like for wood or something. Because all the edges were completely very suspicious. You remember that? Yeah, no, that was not very, uh... It was so bad. Yeah. You need to test when Lambam flex boots. They are much stronger magnetic base. I think we asked them to send us some, some samples that we can test with. Yeah, I saw their magnet doesn't lose, uh, magnetism. Even at, like, yeah, I know they have magnets. a proprietary oh. magnet system that they produce. Um, I'd be curious about the expansion coefficients, though, because you are now having three layers, four layers of different materials. Yeah, um, yeah. But I think we were asking them for samples so that we could recommend it, because there are other printers, not the under three, that would that do work with uh, steel plates, but it, it really depends on the mounting system. Yeah. Um, how many likes do we have on the video? We should we should get those likes up. Yeah. <laughs> we were thinking of like, like strategies. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you're interested in automated three D printing, please like the video because it does it does get help us a lot. <laughs> like, you know, spread throughout the YouTube algorithm that everyone talks about. But it is actually quite genuinely helpful. And we were trying to think of strategies for like, what are some incentives for getting likes? And one of them, I think. Uh, <laughs> It's going to be for every like, we're going to increase the speed rate by 1%. <laughs> so, right. The other one was I was going to be locked in this room until I got enough likes. So, um, please like. Uh, <laughs> okay. Don't know if that one was a joke or not. <laughs> I haven't decided yet. <laughs> See? Guys, please help me. So, we've got, we got, oh, we've got 13. So, I'm... they don't want me to die of starvation. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, it's an unlucky number. We've got, oh, no. <laughs> that's true. That's true. <laughs> I've, I put the feed rate up to 113%. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> oh we've got 14. Okay. 114%. That's not a lot of, you know, um, I feel safe. Something <laughs> also I should mention is um, if you, uh, because this is like a one-time only sale that we're running just for the launch, um, if you want to reshare the stream and get your friends in on the sale, um, we are, if you're in the Discord, we are offering a special stream supporter role to anyone who like either shares their Quinley kit or shares this reshares the stream um, on social media. Just like send us a link to your post or to your Instagram story or whatever, however you decide to do it. And um, yeah, well, uh, we'll we'll give you the special <laughs> nice. It's a nice uh, purple color that uh, that we picked Ooh. out in our Discord. You get a special stream supporter role, That's VIP nice. access. <laughs> Maybe we'll set up like a, a secret channel for the. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, we've got 19 secret. likes. Okay. Wow. This incentive is working. <laughs> I wonder if it was this or me. 
Oh, we've got 20 me. now. Okay. People really want to see this print go fast. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Where's the appendix the limit? Yeah. <laughs> Nobody wants, everyone wants this calibration cube over with already. Yeah, see. You only have one. So, let's go. What are you saying? 3D Maker Engineering has a great flex system also. Let me Google that right now. Ooh, we could do a Quinley sample for a Wamban sample. That's cool. I'll send him another email then. 3D Maker. I haven't heard of 3D Maker Engineering's place either. Or I haven't heard of theirs. Yeah, there's, they have a few different um, beds available. Oh, they've got the... the Garolite? That's the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've got the Garolite and the Easy Max as well. Yeah. I've heard of that one. That's their, like, um, it's similar to... Easy Peasy? I've heard of that one. I think it's, uh, what's it called? Like, similar to the polycarbonate gold plate set that you get. Like, the get gecko type ones, I think. Oh, there we go. They're done. They're done. We are oh. done. Let's see it. So, no, we have to wait for it to cool down. <laughs> yeah, and it's quite warm in this room. Yeah, that's okay. I don't think I've actually seen one fall off yet. What? You haven't walked into the production room and heard like no. parts crashing onto the ground? <laughs> I've been doing other things, and then oh, every time I put a print on, it's either something that I need to stop because it's just for material testing, or oh, like, God. like I just leave it here and it's on the ground the next thing. <laughs> oh my God! Thank you so much, Robert. You you should get a special. Ultra stream supporter role, but we we seriously really appreciate it because yeah. I love to have people more people in here talking about automation like all sorts of automation because mm -hmm. I think three D printing as a technology is at that point where it's like okay we've done it in low volumes the the parts that people are getting in their own homes are like production quality yeah why not just step it up one level to a production system. I agree. <laughs> You better agree. <laughs> <laughs> Two weeks in, we've indoctrinated you to our way of thinking. Exactly. <laughs> I can't not agree. The best kept secret. <laughs> the best kept secret. Yeah, uh, I wonder. <laughs> We're trying not to be so secret anymore, but <laughs> but it is it is pretty interesting. Like just hearing all the like different use cases that. That are like that are the Quinley users are coming up with is is amazing. Like it's things beyond what I could have imagined that the three D printers could be used for. Like I do find it really fascinating that the economics work for those clips because mm -hmm. yeah. you see them and they're like in a store and mass produced and injection molded. <laughs> but then you think about like what's the cost associated with like having one factory distributing to yeah. all of these stores and like setting up all those supply chains where if you had more guys like um like fish fpv just who live near you know a whole foods yeah. and are like hey i'll print you uh 600 a month or something like that like because that one store might only sell that many and then exactly have the store source local and, and have them produce local that's very true it would definitely cut down well if there's a supply shortage, there's not going to be a supply shortage everywhere. Yes. <laughs> and it would cut down a lot on like shipping. shipping, which is like one of the most environmentally damaging industries. Yeah. Um, and clearly they can be stopped easily if they're just large boats getting stuck in canals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, I don't even understand what happened there. Yeah. And Ender 3 <laughs> can't get stuck in the Suez Canal. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> There we go. What kind of filament do you use for the DIY kit? He asked. Uh, that would be on to on. We just use um, Form Futura mm -hmm. Ocean, Ocean Blue, Blue PLA. Yeah. But because it's a DIY kit, you can use any filament you want. Yeah. Um, if you're gonna put it in an enclosure, I would suggest something like PETG or ABS. Um, you can use PLA. We've we've been using PLA for ages, and it, it works just fine. It it's not gonna fall apart. Um, and it survives shipping as well, most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> like, you can pick your own. Pretty much all the time, yeah. 
Um, but yeah, like, uh, you can use anything you want. Oh, hey. Can... Yeah. <laughs> They're in the first room. Yeah. Can you bring one? I'll show the stream. <laughs> this is so funny. One of the customers we do a lot of 3D printing for, he actually recently surpassed 1,000 orders. Uh, we That's that's what we use their production Quinley's for. He actually just came to pick stuff up. Uh, and I'm going to get him to bring one of his boxes that we print for him that we show. Oh, that would be very cool to see. Yeah. Thank you for posting the stream on Facebook, Media Man. You'll have to get the special role as well. Oh, yeah. Steven, are you keeping track yeah. of these? I Maybe Dominic is. Probably. That's true. Probably Dominic. He's yeah. got those five sets. Ooh, thank you, AJ. Oh, and the same color as mine. Oh, yeah, it's printed <laughs> in marble. This is a long box. It's like a storage case for miniature resin art. Yeah, I will bring it up on stream. How many have we printed of these? <laughs> over a thousand now yeah that's pretty amazing that is a lot of long boxes got some mini ones too. oh yeah and then after the success of the big ones we printed probably a few hundred mini black ones and i'll put it on the website too oh straight from production <laughs> oh yeah these still have the skirts on them <laughs> I wonder if we can bring the camera into the production room next time. Yeah, we should get like a mobile one. So I think yeah. that would be cool to see all the parts yeah. everywhere. If you can send me a photo on Discord, I'll put it up on the stream. Okay. Yeah, I'll sh I'll show also a picture of the Longbox website. Um, but this is something like where the volume is generally low enough, mm -hmm. has been low enough that it still makes sense to 3D print these. Mm -hmm. Um, but I mean, a thousand in a year is not, <laughs> nothing to sneeze at, I guess. That's quite a few. Uh, Steven can help you finish those if you want. Sure. Cool. Yeah, we're still going for another half hour. I think, right? 5.30 to 8.30. Yeah. So mentioning that, there is the special stream <laughs> discount code that will also be expiring in half an hour once the stream is ended. So that's why I was suggesting that you guys share um, mm -hmm. with your friends because, you oh, out. let's show this too. Yeah, they don't want to miss out on the sale. <laughs> this is also a bin directly from our production system. Let me just make sure it's on the stream. Uh, this is like... This is pretty much from today and yesterday, right? Uh, I think so. This is just from this week. So I know because I know a bunch of them were getting cleaned. Yeah, on, probably not on Monday. Monday. Yeah, I don't remember. This is just Tuesday, Wednesday then. Yeah, I think um. Yeah, we have like three or four printers doing these ones. I think. Yeah. So this is like the output of three or four printers over two days, and we're <laughs> we've made already made like. 5,000 parts of this. I think the first order was 4,000 pieces. Uh, this is directly yeah. pulled out of the other room, like unprocessed uh, production. So with the land in there, there's a lot on the ground. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we haven't quite set that up. that in the picture that you took? Yeah. There were a bunch on the ground in the picture. <laughs> we, just, we just moved into the new office, so we're getting production set up in a brand new space. Mm -hmm. and. We haven't quite figured out how to collect all the parts, but um, I think Steven's going to send me a photo that I can show you guys. Oh, did you send it? Yeah. Is it in the drive? Uh, it's just on Discord. Oh, I'm not logged in. Oh, yeah. Oh, you have... Can you put it on the drive when you have a second? I will show you guys the first thing I was showing the <laughs> keyboard, but these are like fully 3D printed products. And what was really cool. Oh, and... Oh, let me let me pull it up on the stream. People are just hearing your reaction. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't wait for it to switch. These are these are the ones though. So these are these were printed in um, Form Futura glitter gray. Uh, Did he make these too? No, these are made by like dozens of artists. These are like little resin sculptures that mount onto your keyboard. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's super cool. It's a really crazy hobby. 
Um, so many people are really into custom keyboards. Now, yeah. So that's pretty sick. And so he's done over a thousand of these. I think our first production run, like our, when he launched them, we did 300 and offered them <laughs> in 12 colors, which is like unheard of for any sort of manufacturing except for 3D printing. That's fair. Yeah. Like, this is a really good business model because so many people get these keycaps and like, even though they don't, they can't put them all on their keyboard, they still buy them. Yeah. And they're so expensive too. It's actually insane. I know my boyfriend's going to buy like a thousand dollar custom keyboard. Oh, one of us. Oh my gosh. You have no idea how many <laughs> keyboard people work at this company. <laughs> I'll say my keyboard like is worth more than my computer. Oh so. God. <laughs> I'm, you're talking to one of them right now. But it's this is this is a good use case. Like if you had a bunch of Quinleys, you could take on jobs yeah. like this. Um because <laughs> the client Mac, he is running this business just out of his house yeah. basically. <laughs> um and we're like we our office is fifteen minutes away. So his his entire yeah. production facility is Super within cool. a drive and he can come and uh talk to us when production is too low and when we need to make something and really quickly. Um, and like, if he was injection molding these, no. that would not really be possible. So I, I think this is a really fascinating use case. Yeah. And this is like the type of work that if you had just a couple of Quinley set up, like you could take mm -hmm. on and, and do a whole bunch of these. And, and it is, it is pretty good. Cause if you consider like, um, if you work to eliminate labor, uh, from the equation, like you, you, you end up, um, pretty much making the same as like a full blown industrial like manufacturing <laughs> facility might on something like this. That's so true. And like being able to manufacture in BC, like, you know how you were saying 3D printing in the States would have yeah. cost you for that project $1,200. Yeah. What, what, was, what were the numbers? I think it was like over a thousand dollars for like a few 3D printed pieces in resin. And if I got it in China, it would be like $200. Yeah. So I, it, we got it from China, but like, honestly, why would it be that much more expensive in the U S yeah. like there's really no reason. So. And here, like the manufacturer, us in this case is set up like 15, 20 minutes away from, from the store. And yeah. And we're able to offer like prices that are good enough to keep manufacturing exactly. local and not have to worry about, you know, bulk ordering. Um, we make them, AJ comes and picks them up weekly. We mm -hmm. make them to demand weekly. It, it's pretty uh, easy on us in that mm -hmm. case, because we don't have to pre-purchase um, like crazy amounts of yeah. filament either. That makes sense. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really nice and really convenient. And th that's only possible because the Quinley automation that we have <laughs> on, on our printers um, keeps the cost low enough to do that. Exactly. Yeah, I think it's also nice too, just because like, you're so close, the shipping times, you don't need to worry about things like that as well. Like that was one of the issues with like ordering from China, it was going to take like forever to come, but of course it's cheaper. <laughs> so yeah. There's drawbacks to that, of course. And then like, I don't know. Yeah, like we're doing week to week production for AJ, which is, which, I mean, if he, I'm trying to convince him, but he doesn't have space in his apartment, but if he had a couple of printers set up, then it would be like hour to hour. Like he could just send one to print as soon as he got the order. So there, there are two ways you could deploy this. You could be a local manufacturer for friends and, and people, you know, who have ideas to, to make something, um, or you could just produce for your own store too. And like I said, like the barrier to entry is really low it's yeah if you already have an under three <laughs> then it's a hundred bucks like exactly and you can now produce like yeah dozens to hundreds of things a week it's like it's, it's uh i think it's really cool i think so too yeah <laughs> yeah um and if you would like to hear i guess more i'm just going to remind people again because it has been the average watch time is 17 minutes. So every 17 minutes, I'll remind <laughs> everyone if you if you want to hear more about automated manufacturing um, and like what hardware goes well with with Quinley and, and what hardware like withstands kind of automated manufacturing. Um, we'll be doing a ton of experiments on this YouTube channel. Yeah, getting the removal. Oh. Yeah.
Very Bye clean. Me. Very clean. So <laughs> almost no adhesion left yeah. um, when the bed is cooled down. Okay. It's at 29C. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's the magic. It looks really simple, but there's a lot of really complicated chemical engineering <laughs> yeah. that goes into this print surface. And then there's a lot of software engineering that goes into preparing the G-code files to work mm -hmm. really well with the automation. That's good. One thing I would suggest that we're seeing here is not to use a skirt on your prints where possible yeah. or have a skirt very loosely attached. That's good. Um, so now it's just going to finish the wipe and just start the next of the 25 calibration <laughs> cubes. <we've Yay>. <laughs> um, one thing we're also doing is for every like on the video, we're increasing <laughs> the feed rate by 1%. So we have 21 likes and the feed rate is now 121%. There we go. Okay, give me a second. This next one's gonna be insanely fast. I hope it sticks. That's really, that's kind of fast. <laughs> We also have uh, Gabriel asking about uh, failure detection. Oh, yeah. Says, Does it have something to detect failed prints? I run into failed prints every so often. Um, it'd be interesting to hear, Gabriel, what type of failed yeah, prints. Yeah, I want to know that. Actually. Yeah, because Leia is one of the engineers that's working on our auto failure detection. Mm -hmm. um, if you've heard of Spaghetti Detective, it's yeah. going to be similar to that, but we're going to be looking for a couple different failure conditions mm -hmm. they just look for spaghetti um yeah. but we'll <laughs> before, yeah we'll be looking for um things that affect the automation because there's certain failures that like let's say your extruder stops extruding that won't actually affect um yeah. the whole automation that's true so that's something we'll do um yeah why don't you tell them a bit about it yeah i think um we kind of want to do a few different failure modes like you said and I think one thing I want to do or hopefully um well hopefully we'll have time and hopefully it'll work all work out but I think if we could bring up like some sort of web search because I know that like a lot of people who are new to 3D printing don't even know what like the failure is called so they can't search it up so if it could give you a name at least and then maybe even pull up a web search result that like a bunch of other people have run into that issue and have solved it due to something that would be really cool just so that people who are newer to 3D printing will not be so overwhelmed when they try to get into it. And I think if you got like a 3D printer and this kit, then you would not be as scared as like maybe some other people might be just because a lot of people I think who get 3D printers are more technical and they think they can figure it out, which is good. But like people who are not as technical, they're scared to even try at that point and they won't even try to get a 3D printer or play with it or anything. So if they have something that will help them out a little bit, especially for beginners, I think that'll be really cool if you can get that all set up. Yeah, and it, it is actually interesting. A lot of people are getting a Quinley kit as one of the first upgrades to their printer. Like it, it, it is, there are a couple use, yeah, you, <laughs> one of, there are a couple of users we've got that, um, they just bought their Ender and they bought it with a Quinley kit because they don't want the hassle of having to constantly babysit and maintain their printer. And and that's where the failure detection does come in. Mm -hmm. um, oh, do I have to? Re but yeah, so what we're what we're starting work on, what Leia is starting work on, she, she's just been interning with us for two weeks, is um, the camera enabled failure detection. And like you're saying, looking at different modes and, and also things like um, prints rarely fail as spaghetti. Like spaghetti tends to be a, a symptom after a print has failed. Yeah. Um, usually spaghetti occurs when the print has come detached. Yeah. So like doing print detachment detection. Yeah, or, that definitely. Yeah, that would, that would prevent <laughs> spaghetti in the first place. Or doing things like um, making sure that like if the extruder gets clogged, like detecting that and and stopping the print from going any mm -hmm. further so the extruder doesn't get more damage or create more of a mess. That kind of thing is, is how we're looking at implementing failure detection. Um, that being said, like, yeah, I would love to know what exactly, um, what kind of failures you are experiencing. Does that have something to do, detect? 
Yeah, what what type, Gabriel? Um, because some of these, uh, some of the failures are actually prevented by the Quinley kit itself because of the, the good adhesion of the bed. Mm -hmm. We're also getting questions. What is the minimum height needed for Quinley to work correctly? How tall does a part oh, need to be? That's a super good question. Oh. Um, it's the lowest part that we've mass produced. And by mass produced, I mean, we've done a few hundred of these um, on various printers is um, headbands and they were 1.8 millimeters thick. Um, the clear height is 0.5 millimeters and the release works well enough that you can actually release really, really thin parts um, that with a really wide base. I guess I could show you guys some videos while this new print is starting. Okay, let's. Uh, I've also sent the link to the uh, production setup. I've got it. Um, okay, so let's go to our YouTube channel. Because we do have it. Oh my God. We do have it on our YouTube. Some really, really thin prints. Do we have the video of the ear savers? Do you know, Stephen? I thought that was on our YouTube. Yeah. Um, I'll show you a big, like a large surface area print though, that we, that kind of shows like demonstrates how well the release works. Um, so like here's, here it is. So this is like a, I think 20 by 20 centimeter print and like, Usually on a traditional print surface, you'd expect this to be pretty stuck, but no, there, it completely slides <laughs> off. So that's something that's like a lot of engineering went into the surface and into the software to make sure that that is possible to do. Um, and yeah, with the DIY Quinley kit, you get both the surface and the software and all the hardware you need to put it together. Um, for a hundred bucks, if you order before this <laughs> stream ends in less than uh, 30 minutes. Um, the other thing I was going to show you guys was uh, <laughs> this is our current production setup. Keep in mind, we literally just moved, but it's just a whole bunch of Quinleys and parts scattered all over the place. Um, Most of them are in the box. <laughs> a lot of them are in the box, but yeah, this is kind of. And th this setup, like if you think about it, like we're we're doing, you know, hundreds of parts on this and uh, like what would something like this cost? The frame is probably the frame would probably be like two fifty, and then each ender is one thirty five. So that's uh, eight enders. So that's like a thousand bucks. Um, and if you did DIY Quinleys on them right now, that would be another eight hundred. So for two thousand bucks, you've got like a fully fledged <laughs> manufacturing system that like fits in a closet. Literally. Yeah, this is tiny. We plan to put three more in this room um, and just we basically managed to consolidate most of our production in here. <laughs> That's the name of the photo. Hmm? I like the name of the photo. Oh, Mateo clicked this one.jpg. <laughs> yeah, it's a great name. Thank you. Um, yeah, we've got a bunch of videos on our site of the part release as well um, if you want to take a look at it. I think uh, part of from the from and oh. on, the oh, bottom of the on the bottom of the dog. On Instagram. Ah, thank you, thank you. So here's a really complicated print. This this one I like. This one the nozzle didn't go down low enough, but like it shows that the adhesion is high enough to do these really complicated first layers. Um, but it's also able to release really complicated and really large areas. Uh, what was the other one you sent? <laughs> headbands. Oh, thank you. Oh, here are headbands. Do you have the ear savers? I'm looking for them. Okay. So headbands, we actually did a test um, last year where we printed on nine machines. We did a thousand hours of autonomous printing and we printed 930 something of these headbands. <laughs> um, and what was really cool was that all those printers were outfitted with Quinley, 
out of the thousand hours of printing, we only had three hours of downtime. And all of those one and a half hours are just filament changes <laughs> and one and a half hours are filament jams. Fair. And the the like the I um the, the Quinley system itself, the auto release did not fail. And we were able to run 3D printers with 99.7% uptime, Damn. which is like <laughs> pretty good. <laughs> yeah. So like, if you would like to run your printer with 99.7% uptime, I would definitely recommend uh, the yeah, Quinley yeah. DIY kit. How long does the bed task before you last before you have to replace it? No, no worries about the questions. <laughs> um, the, the beds, are engineered to last like years pretty much um i still have one of the first paper beds i developed which is now i don't even know it's like three or four years old maybe even older um and it still works perfectly fine as long as you don't damage the bed itself um the performance won't be affected uh by plastics okay Sorry, I'm getting back to all the comments I missed while I was showing you guys the, uh... Oh yeah, Robert, thank you. Yeah, he's never had bad adhesion issues with the Quinley bed. It is, it is important, though, he does bring up a really good point. It is important to make sure that your first layer is calibrated correctly, and this includes uh, height and temperatures, um, because it is a bit different from, like, glass or PEI. Um, often you have to print a bit hotter. Will you guys have Quinley for the Prusa? I haven't the Ender 3, but it's tricky with the responsibility of self-balancing the bed, even with the BL touch. That is a good question. Um, I would say expect an announcement very, very soon. And if you want, uh, please DM me on Discord. <laughs> Once it's dialed in, the prints just stick and release when done. Um, that's another thing too. Like if if you exper do experience failures um, due to like the adhesion changing over time, we'll happily send you a new print bed. Um, we're very very confident in the formulation that we've produced because its entire goal is to be reliable so that your printer can produce reliably. Um, so yeah, so there's kind of a performance guarantee on on that front. Um, so if it does start changing over time for any reason, I mean, except for obviously damage, there are some ways you can damage the bed, um, but like just normal printing and no, like you're not scratching it or you're not pouring solvents on it and not putting like weird blue on it. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll back, we'll back up our claims on that. And, and we, we actually have in some cases, like um, where people have had I think one person had an issue and we, we just sent them a new bed. No more glue sticks. Yeah. No more, no more hairspray. Yeah. Let me pull out Leia's bed again. That was, this is like the original bed that had hairspray. Did it have glue stick on it? No, it was just Never hairspray. Never glue stick, just hairspray. And then I tried to wash it off and then something happened. Yeah. This is like not, not fun. I was not gonna bring it in originally, but then Mateo's like, no, that's good. You should show them that. Yeah. The shameful bed. <laughs> Everyone's got one. <laughs> oh, we've got we've still got 21 likes. How am I gonna increase the speed rate? <laughs> we need more. Maybe there's some new people that don't know about the Oh, yeah. oh yeah, tell them for all those new people, if you're interested in hearing more about automation for 3D printing or 3D printing for manufacturing, definitely subscribe to this channel because we'll be doing all future product announcements on here. Um, and you'll be able we'll be doing live demos like this one. Um, but we're also doing a thing where if you like the video, the number of likes equals the number of feed rate that we'll be putting on the printer. So there we go, right now, more. Oh, we got another one. So now we're at 122 percent speed. Oh my god, 123. This actually works. Wait until Joel or someone's like does the same thing and he's printing at like max oh speed, like max five. I guess we can't we get too many. Like, oh, we're at 23. 
There we go. I've got it at 123. Oh, Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, the other thing to mention is there, I think we've, how much time do we have left on the sale? This sale up yeah. here that you see is a stream exclusive sale. So if you share the stream with anyone you think might be interested in not babysitting their printer, <laughs> um, I would definitely suggest doing that now because once the stream ends, the sale will end as well. Yeah, 40 minutes is okay, the time you've got left. Good. Okay, we've got 40 minutes left. Sorry, I, I uh, misspoke earlier. But... <laughs> I just wanted you to buy them really fast. That's true, that's true. 40 minutes. And and also, um, we do have a community Discord. So, um, where, like, if you're just curious, too, jo join up the Discord and you can talk to people who are using Quinly. And we get a lot of feedback through that way. Um, and, like, we actually designed, we did a UI redesign that was completely driven by a couple of our uh, community member beta testers and I think it came out really nice and, and we're really excited to to be able to roll that out to you guys in the next update um, the other thing I would mention too is if you share the stream and, and share the discount code we're also giving out a special role in the discord called stream supporter <laughs> uh, in case you want to feel special and have a purple name in the discord uh, some people have already done it, and uh, you can you can join the club. <laughs> More hairspray, or that brand new big bottle of nano polymer. <laughs> oh, cool! Oh, Gabriel, I'll bring that up with uh, with Steph. I'm sure Steph's probably already on it. Um, yeah, shipping should be covered. If it says so. Yeah, I have to post for both ends. Okay, good. Thank you. Also, thank you for the like, uh, Pierre. <laughs> we're we're printing a, a bit faster now. Yeah, it's good. It looks like nothing has like messed up. Messed up. No, your first one came up pretty good at one one nineteen, I think. Yeah. Oh. Those layers are very nice. Oh yeah, sure. Let me switch over to uh, the Steven cam. <laughs> oh, wait, hold on. <laughs> Steven's, it's like lagging the entire stream. Oh, oh, it? oh no, it's good. It's good. We've got like, holy moly. Oh, that's this one. <laughs> yeah, here you go. That's pretty good. I'm, I'm, continually impressed by the quality you can get out of vendors like i mean that's why it's the basis for a production system but the quality is pretty outstanding oh yeah <laughs> previous color. this is a dual extrusion yeah. experiment <laughs> i thought i got all of it out so there we go. <laughs> yeah but this is pretty awesome like i mean we use the enders for final parts production. Here's a smaller one. That one's way cuter, I feel like. The baby calibration. <laughs> but yeah, if you can get this level of quality out of a $200 3D printer, like, why wouldn't you just take the beautiful prototypes you make and, and extend them to production, right? Like, exactly. with Quinley, you can do that. And I think um, that's why a lot of people have jumped on board. But... Let me find that quote again. That was so funny. Like, it's it's one of the best kept secrets in three D printing. No, I don't. Know. Yeah, no. <laughs> we don't want it to be a secret. We're trying our best. Get it out there. Yeah. You guys can share our secret. We give you permission. Yeah. <laughs> Tell everyone this secret. You'll you'll even get a special role in the Discord. Those old magnetic. Ender beds are great for catching screws and other steel parts. Oh. I put my old one. Oh. <laughs> That's pretty smart. Yeah. Good screw catcher. I do end up with a lot of screws on the floor. <laughs> Discord link has been updated. Oh, 
Oh, we'll double check the code. It should be working. Um, thank you for bringing that up, though. Skyfire. What else should we talk about? I mean, we have plenty of stuff to talk about. We can go back and because a lot of a lot of people the entire thing. from the beginning. No. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Like the people are gonna put this in their own building, right? So yeah. Got different options for colors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What you colors do you guys want? want? Yeah. What colors do you guys want to put your building in? Yeah, I did blue because I thought it would look really thick with the LCD screen, and then it's also like transparent kind of, so you can see the filament on the inside. Yeah. We could show them the gyro like one I printed before. <laughs> oh, this is so cool. Yeah. Yeah, let me switch uh, switch views. That's pretty cool. It actually really looks good on this side, the cross section. I hope it's picking up. Oh, it's a light over. But, like, yeah, you can do different, like, translucent ones or, like, just normal ones, but, like, a color you actually really like. And then make it look more customized and just like the edge kit. Yeah. Yeah, you can customize it however you want. Um, we, we've also set up a Thingiverse if you want to share your customizations with other people. Um, like, for example, um, Jeremy, I think it was, he <laughs> reversed the ramps yes. to pull the part. <laughs> inwards and downwards underneath the print bed which makes sense because some in some cases you may not want the parts to be flying out to the side yeah. um oh do you mind zooming up the main cam a little bit <laughs> layers off the screen <laughs> thank you <laughs> the off the screen <laughs> yeah um but yeah we're also some someone was uh some people were talking about doing mounting it directly to 2020 or 3030 extrusion especially if we're considering a setup like um like we've got here uh where was it here mm -hmm. these are kind of mounting onto special brackets we've made that go directly into the extrusion oh, yeah, um, that yeah so because the files will be available to print um when you get the diy kit you'll be able to customize it however you want yeah, so that's pretty exciting. I'm excited to see what people come up with yeah, too. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I think we should show Jeremy Owens sing. Yeah, it's very cool. He's like our best use case, I think, we've seen so far. Jeremy is, has been really like sharing quite, quite a lot of, of how he's been using the printer so it, it's been pretty awesome um for those of you who weren't here I'll, I'll show you his story again um he's actually quite a recent customer uh that purchased the full quinley kit um and i'll just show you what he's doing what he's done so jeremy works uh for matco tools uh, let me just go back to the beginning of the slideshow. So he, like, he's done some pretty impressive stuff. So, um, here we go. So he's a district manager for Matco Tools, and he works um, in North Dakota and Minnesota. And he's been doing, uh, like, he does a lot of driving around, and he, he's not often around to maintain his 3D printer, but he's actually been doing 3D printing for seven years now. And so what he prints are these tool displays. Um, and he's got 25 trucks. And in each truck, there are uh, 25 of these socket rail holders per truck. And there are 8 to 12 electric tool holders per truck as well. So the, these guys here. Sounds like a math problem. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it it kind of does. <laughs> so how many, how many total? Um, <laughs> And he says that ever since he's implemented this like display style in the in the sales trucks, um, 
the or the trucks that have it implemented have seen a 400 percent increase sales to his distributors which is yeah. kind of crazy yeah, yeah like it's a pretty simple fix you would think but it's like paid dividends yeah. um like quadrupled his sales literally just to present present them in this it's such a simple idea yeah. which i think is why it's so brilliant um and so his issue was that uh for a full truck's worth of parts um it was taking about 75 hours and it and it would be a total of 1800 hours for the entire fleet for the entire team <laughs> and he's on the road four days a week so he's not around his normal ender to uh constantly be resetting yeah. it or make, or like restarting prints and stuff um and removing prints and so he's been making these for about two years now and over those two years he's done um, 200 of the holders, which is enough to outfit five or six trucks. Um, what's really cool and like what was really awesome to hear is ever since he got Quinley, um, he started continuously printing while he was away. Um, and he's also been using like the remote stop and start thing so that his wife can change filaments. Um, and he, he's posted a bunch of photos on on social media and, and various other sites but you can see it here too he shared some of them with us um and since he got quinley so in the last two years he's printed 200 holders in the first week since he's had one printer with one quinley he's printed another 200 holders so like more than the last two years he's already like exceeded and it, and it's simply because even though he's on the road four days a week, he's actually able to to run his, the printer is able to run itself. Quinley is able to run his printer. Um, so like, if you're buying now for a hundred dollar upgrade, in his case, it's like a, what is it? A hundred times fold increase in production. Sure. Not, I said 50 earlier, but thinking about it, it's two <laughs> years, which is 102 weeks. And then he did the same thing in one week. Which is like you never see a hundredfold increase. That's incredible. Like it, it opens up three D printing to an entirely new category of, of yeah. user that is too busy to be managing their printer. It's um, like a definition of passive income in a way. Yeah, like, stuff. yeah exactly. Like literally making money in your sleep, right? <laughs> yeah, modified your yeah, sleep. Yeah, it, it, it does. Yeah. It does pay itself back very quickly. <laughs> Especially in, in Jeremy's case. Oh, it's done. Um and and since then he's actually gotten a second Quinley. So I can't imagine I guess he's gonna print uh enough for the entire company yeah. across the entire US if he's got two Quinleys going. <laughs> but no, it, it's so cool. And then while he's away, he does ten batches of twelve hour prints. So yeah. he's letting his printer run for 120 hours unattended. <laughs> and Quinley, well, it's not unattended. It's Quinley is managing it. Yeah. Um, and so he, he it's yeah, it's pretty amazing um what he's been able to do since then. And I think this is a brilliant use case, just just how quickly it paid back. Yeah. Um, in terms of like the increased sales that he got. For sure. Um <laughs> yeah and and one thing that he mentioned too is he has a lot more free time when he is at home because he doesn't have to reset the printer he's able to just that's what i'd like to hear yeah he's able to spend more time uh designing designing parts um which i definitely empathize with i like mm -hmm. designing things i don't like unclogging my hot end or watching my first layer for like 40 minutes <laughs> exactly yeah it's pretty like his his case is pretty awesome um and i'm i'm so happy that it's it's worked so well for him um definitely like super cool yeah mm -hmm. we like to brag about his story a little bit <laughs> <Clearly>. <laughs> yeah i'm just trying to get back onto the stream so i can see you guys comments oh, yeah. Oh, he got the code to work. Okay, thank you. That's good to know. 
Will the free shipping be fixed before the stream ends? I don't mind paying for shipping. Uh, oh my god, I'm getting wrecked <laughs> by shipping. Gabriel, we're, we're looking currently into the free shipping thing. My distributors have also started selling my prints to their customers. Oh, that's really cool. I guess you'll have to get a third friendly. <laughs> That's 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 actually pretty awesome. I I guess it would be cool as well to um like if you could set it up in the distributor's shop somehow. We we actually have used it. We use the Quinleys to make custom packaging for the full kit. And actually there will be uh 3D printed packaging in the DIY kit as well for the print beds. So um I could totally see it being used as like a, a more neat niche packaging solution. Um, yeah, because it's not that expensive. I think we've got custom brackets for the extrusion, so they don't punch through the side of the cardboard box. <laughs> That's and I think they cost us like forty cents for both of them. Oh, yeah, yeah I mean, twenty cents each. The material is pretty cheap, especially because you can get a whole spool for like twenty bucks, thirty bucks. Yeah, and, and for like for things like um packaging, it doesn't have to be the best material either. You can yeah, get some really cheap <laughs> filament if you want. But it yeah, that's that's super cool to hear. I did not know that your distributors were also selling the prints. That's like <laughs> maybe you'll just graduate to just be running like actually you wouldn't even have to run it. You would just be the source of all of these really cool <laughs> things. Um are you planning on if you're still in the stream? Are you planning on designing kind of anything anything new? Like those those designs are really cool. Um, I could honestly see us using it because we have bits everywhere and like non matching <laughs> yeah. cases for the bits as well. We're very disorganized right now <laughs> with the move. Yeah, with the move, it's been <laughs> it's been a bit crazy. Oh, here this is the one I wanted to see. Mm -hmm. Oh, it turns it off if I pause. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, this looks so clean. And I love that it mounts directly into the uh, oh, pegboard, yeah, too. It does. Very customizable. Yeah, because you would just print a different inlay yeah. for each one. How many unique parts have you had to design for this, too? I'm really curious. Let's see. Sorry for all the switching. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a pretty awesome use case. And it's also one of those where you slowly see it, see it start growing. So yeah. he went from the five trucks when he was manually printing to now, I guess, five or six more trucks since he's doubled the amount of parts yeah. he's done. And now the distributors are buying it and, and he's gotten a second Quinley. I just, uh, let's see. I also design stream light flashlight displays. What is that? Let's, oh no, I don't want to print it. <laughs> Let's take a look. Stream light flashlight. What are streams? Oh. Oh, interesting. Are those like very, very directed flashlights? That's what's coming up. special name Streamlight. Oh, I see. Examples of our different beam pads. Oh, oh, I see. I understand. Displays for the flashlights. Oh my god. <laughs> I understand. Sorry, we're we're three hours <laughs> in. I'm a little bit dense right now. Oh, Tristan trying to poach the design. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool yeah that's awesome I guess it might be worth mentioning we've got 20 minutes left on the sale so if you uh if you want to get your diy quinley kit mm -hmm. for the discounted price now is your time do you have any word on the shipping thing um i haven't received any word on that no okay streamlight streamlight Look at the price. Look at the price. Oh my goodness. 
You could get Wait, you could get two Quinleys for one stream light. Wait, why are they so special? What is it for? It's probably like an a uh, uh, professional flashlight. Okay. <laughs> like it's like a good quality flashlight. Okay. Oh, I got it for the Stinger for this specific oh. model. Here, let me put it up on stream. So he's, I want to see the video. Why is this special? He's printing. Uh displays for this particular flashlight i could see why you need a custom display for this oh yeah like look, look no wonder it's so expensive it's it's like a, an incredibly powerful flashlight this is awesome so jeremy's also going to be printing displays for these he's going to be printing displays for everything <laughs> That's awesome. Like I, I'm looking for it. If you if you do print end up printing those, please share mm -hmm. the uh share some photos because yeah, that's gonna be so cool. It's a good use case for 3D printing because displays don't you don't need to mass produce those. That's true. But you do want to produce like a good number of them. So they're kind of that mid range. Yeah, and you then they can't be too expensive because they tend to be temporary. Yeah. Or not temporary, but you have to be able to cycle products out. And like you can see, Jeremy's design is very modular. We have most just placed his order. Oh, Thank you very much. We're excited to have <laughs> you. We're, yeah, well, we're excited to have you. Make sure you join our Discord too so that uh, we can help you out if you need help getting set up. And um, yeah, we're excited to have you on board with the uh, with automated 3D printing I think the more we can get the word out I think like like I don't know I, it's it's just so cool but I, I think automated 3D printing is where manufacturing has to go in order to be sustainable in the future and um, I'm happy to have you on board um, yeah if you guys can share this screen I guess oh, we're yeah. almost near the end of this one, but catch us on the next one and share it. <laughs> yeah. Subscribe. Get, uh, yep. Subscribe. A like. Hit that like. I mean, we're actually not really printing right now, but the feed rate. It will be going. It will be. Like that. I think we'll get one more, one more start of a print in. Yeah. yeah. Um, before the stream ends, but yeah, in this, in these last uh, twenty minutes before the special stream only sale end. Um, <laughs> if you share the stream uh, to people you're interested in, they can of course have this. $30 discount on the on the launch price, um, which yeah, is expiring in 20 minutes. Um, and also, uh, if you share it on social media, we'll give you a special stream supporter role in our discord so that you can I guess you can stand out and show, show your support. Flex on everyone. Yeah, flex on everyone in the in the discord. They're like, yeah, I shared it. Give a different colored name. Yeah, <laughs> you'll be uh, everyone will see that you got in on the ground floor. Um, but yeah, um, I guess for, because we do get a constant influx of people, um, for those of you who are new here again, I'll reiterate, uh, this is the, the DIY version of our Quinley kit. So we've, um, after talking to you guys, we've, we've cut out the 3d printed parts so you can print them yourself at home in any color you like, we'll provide the files of course. Um, and the DIY kit includes all the hardware you need to put it together. Um, as well as our specially formulated um, vapor bed and uh, a lifetime key to the Quinley software, which is used to um, queue up G codes, process the G codes, manage your prints, um, and together with the vapor bed, it's what unlocks uh, the automation. And of course, Quinley is is built to work with your Ender. It actually supports quite a lot of mods. Um, as well. So the idea being that instead of having to buy a new printer, like a tre treadmill printer mm -hmm. to gain automation, <laughs> it's a, it's another upgrade. Like you would upgrade your hot end or something. How and much are those ones? The treadmill printers? Yeah. Uh, I think they're like 800 US. <laughs> okay. That was the Kickstarter <laughs> price. I don't know what they are. Now. I think, <laughs> I think so. I think they're over a thousand now. So you could get one treadmill printer. <laughs> you do get infinite C though, which which this will not give you. I guess so. But if you want, if you're just interested in like the production line automation, mm -hmm. um, with a clean release on your existing machines, you can get ten DIY Quinley kits for the price of one of those. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and just to give you guys a sense of what we mean by the automated release, um, we've spent a really long time engineering the bed to be able to adhere really well when it's hot and release completely when it's cold. And you can get away with this on certain other beds like glass or PEI, but it tends to be inconsistent with different sized parts and different materials. Whereas the vapor bed, we've been printing PLA, ABS. Um, some of our customers print PETG. I'll show you right now. He's done um, 600 of these in PETG. Um, and we've even done more exotic materials like polypropylene and PCTPE on this. Um, polycarbonate is like one of the most surprising ones that I love <laughs> that we can print automatically on an ender. Um, but yeah, it's engineered to basically work with anything you can throw at it. Um, and of course, uh, it also comes, you can come into the Discord and, and we'll help you out. And and here's just, just an idea for how the, um, like just how, it, I don't like to, I mean, it's pretty impressive, like the <laughs> type of part that works with the automated release. Um, some people ask about thin parts. We've done parts that are only 1.8 millimeters thick. Oh, I'll show you the release don't slide. Wish. Here, let's go. Show it live. <laughs> Here it comes, so you'll see. Ta-da! It's a very, very <laughs> clean release. I want to actually take off the rest of the stuff. <laughs> yeah, it took the other, <laughs> the other things with it. You find they fix themselves. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I'll like take the old skirts with them, but really shouldn't be printing with skirts. Um, here, thank you, Stephen. Beautiful. And I'll show you guys another example of of a release that we did with a very, very large flat part. So if you think about this, like you could be running these on your printer all night long, not having to worry about going and scraping or applying any sort of glue or anything. Yeah. Um, just running them back to back. Yeah. Cool. Really good bet. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Direct compliment from the channel. Yeah. It took a long time <laughs> to put together. Let's check the comments. Oh, mechanics and police. Oh yeah, see it is it's a flashlight for professional. Oh, okay. Thank you. I'm, I'm so excited to see those product photos, Jeremy. Yes. Watching live stream as I watch print live stream. <laughs> Two printers. <laughs> Two printers. We've got a special thing. I wonder if we should do that for a 24 7 stream. Somehow set up like the amount of likes is the amount of speed that happens. <laughs> Get one of the devs to do that. Yeah. <laughs> um, as your build plate works well with Pet G, what about Ender 3 hot ends? Do they need all metal upgrades for printing Pet G? On our production systems, we do upgrade. Um, for uh, just printing, even printing in PLA, we upgrade to E3D V6 type hot ends. Um, it's a pretty recommended upgrade because the Ender hot ends tend to be um, kind of inconsistent over long periods of time. So that's some of the other things. If you look at the other video on our channel, we were even looking at like dyes hot ends, whether it'd be worth it just because of their consistency. And that's a test we'll be running for the next six weeks as well. Um, but I would recommend upgrading to, maybe not all metal, but I would recommend upgrading from the Ender 3 style hot end to a V6 for Pet G. Um, the other thing to note with Pet G running automatically is every Pet G brand tends to be very different. Um, and we found that the settings vary quite a lot between, um, colors and brands. So you'll have to... <clears throat> Be prepared to do a bit of fiddling with like the temperatures and the speeds in the That's first good. layer height. Um, but yeah, a decent amount of people we know have printed with PETG, and then internally we found one brand of PETG that wouldn't work, which was which is actually discontinued now. So <laughs> there's like no chance that you'll end up buying it, right? It was the MG Chemical stuff. Yeah, it's fairly like limited batch. 
Kevin says two cubes down, 23 to go. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, we've got, yeah, if you look in the, uh, here, I'll show you guys the UI. We've got two of 25 done. <laughs> but it is really that simple. Like, you just say, I want 25 of these, throw it in the queue, and, and some ages later, you'll have 25 cubes <laughs> sitting at the edge of your desk. Yeah, sorry, I should have chosen a more fun thing to print 25 of. Cubes are fun. <laughs> they print quick. They print quick and, yeah, off so. and like when we when we uh, dare people to increase the uh, <laughs> aid rate, it doesn't uh, fall apart. That's true. Plan on upgrading the hardware to E3D users. I think um, I'll do some research, Skyfire, but I think the Micro Swiss hot end also works pretty well um, for Pet G, but I haven't personally used mine very much atomic filament carbon their pet chi is an amazing stuff oh yeah atomic filament carbon fiber i've heard of this atomic filament stuff is generally really good already but i know their pet chi is like special maybe you should uh <laughs> get a dies <laughs> for that <laughs> His dyes are apparently really good for printing carbon fiber. Um, they sent us an email after the stream with some extra information. You can print it really fast. Okay. Bye, Tristan. Thank you for sticking around for the stream. Uh, West Coast, best coast is still <laughs> early in the night. We got another uh, question from Mo. It seems like Dominic answered him, but it might be cool just to talk about. Um, he wanted to add firmware to his printer to account for his mods. Mm -hmm. So uh, maybe we talk about some sort of mods that people do on these. Yeah, um, we're trying to pull out any sort of firmware specific things from into the Quinly software itself. So most mods should work. Um, we actually have a series on our website called Mod Mondays where we talk about the different mods that we've done and that our users have done. Um, most will actually be compatible with the Quinly. The only ones that aren't compatible presently are major, major mods. Like if you replace the entire control board um, like with, with a different type, um, or if you replace the firmware from Marlin to Repetier, that won't work. But things like different hot ends, um, dual C, dual extrusion, all of that stuff should work um, pretty well. Even things like if you use your firmware to do filament out, I think that will work as well. Um, that being said, if you do end up picking up a kit and you need help with your firmware, just ask in our Discord. All of our engineering staff is there and they'll be able to help you out. Um, we also have uh, some community members that are more than happy to mm -hmm. help out with the with, uh, with firmware as well, specifically uh, Jack, who's been there mm -hmm. in times of need, He's always the only ready. One like a hardware support role, right? Yeah, he's, got, he's the only one so far. He's got he's got hardware support, and he yeah he's a community member, but he he knows everything about firmware. So if one of us don't get to you first, he'll he'll help you out for sure. Good point. There are seven minutes left on the timer Whoa. at 9, 9 p.m. PST. This code will no longer be available. See if you got them. We'll see. Thank you for having me. I think oh, I did a little, little bit off. Oh. Your first one was really good. Though, <laughs> this one? Like in the beginning of the stream, you pointed perfectly right now. <laughs> I was practicing at home. Yeah. Oh, of course. Good night, Jeremy. Thank you for sticking around for the whole stream. Yeah. It was nice to have you, and, and it was awesome to talk about yeah. uh, how you've managed to get so much value out of this. Um, I'm, ex I'm really excited to see those photos. Do you have an update on shipping, by the way? Staff is refunding everyone who paid for shipping. Okay, oh, so if you already paid for shipping, it's going to be refunded. Um, everyone knew that's ordering, I guess, 
If you do end up paying for it, it'll get refunded. If you yeah. don't end up paying for it, you don't end up paying. <laughs> that is correct. But shipping within North America is free. Um, and then, of course, there's a thirty dollars off with a special code. Uh, valid for like five more minutes. Valid for five more <laughs> minutes. So you should definitely share this stream, or if you know people who are asleep, order yeah. one for them and use this code. Or you can wake them up. Or wake them up and get them in the stream right before we close. Um, cool. We've got our calibration cubes. Your 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 pro is now upfitted with the DIY to use it for other things now, not just calibration cubes. Yeah. Or maybe just calibration cubes. I mean, Who knows? Maybe there's a market. I don't know. Maybe that, paint it yourself. Yeah. That'd be pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> Turned like, it in one color and just painted other yeah. colors. The, one calibration cube for every one of your friends. Yeah. The other I thing. Only have three. <laughs> the other thing I should mention is, um, in the future, we also plan to do product launches uh, on this YouTube. So if you haven't subscribed already, make sure you do because I don't know. Maybe we'll have some more stream-only flash sales, and maybe. Um, this is one of the best ways to get notified. Of <laughs> Um, so yeah, if you, if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe, um, and like the video too, I guess, if you like it, cause it does help get the word out, uh, -huh. in the, uh, yeah, we hope not to be the best kept secret in 3d printing. We hope to be an open secret in 3d printing as one of our, uh, customers so nicely described us. It's a pretty good description, but yeah, if you think more people should know about it, definitely share and um, the yeah engagement helps YouTube spread it around. Unfortunately, yes. we live in a world ruled by algorithms, so if you don't engage, if you don't like and subscribe, then then the algorithm gods look down on us <laughs> and and keep this technology secret from everyone. Um, yeah, I mean, what else should I mention? Maybe what we're coming up with next, or we still need to think about that, don't we? <laughs> next week? Well, we'll, we'll be announcing uh, what's on our next uh, live stream later on this week. Yeah, so I would stay tuned for that. Uh, we're not announcing it just yet. It's top secret. Yeah, Taylor has a bunch of secrets. Yeah. But some of them you don't want to keep. <laughs> yeah, some of them we don't want to keep. Oh my! Oh, Kevin, he's Mr. Schaefer is going for the. Uh, he wants the cube. He wants. <laughs> he just wants to put much more calibration cubes. Yeah, yeah, or maybe we can. Uh, maybe you can get us set up like we've got going in the <laughs> office, like one of these. Oh yeah. Soon you'll have enough, actually. Um, the aluminum for this is not too bad. Maybe we could even put out some files on it. Um. Yeah, I think probably as we come down to the last uh, two and a half minutes here, we should definitely thank everyone for for stopping by the stream. Um, yeah, thanks for joining us on this pretty exciting product launch. It's it's always fun to have a second product launch. Um, thanks for all of those who have stayed with us for the full three and a half hours. That's pretty fun. They got a few repeats, but I think they had a good time, hopefully. Yeah, yeah and, um, yeah, I mean, the DIY Quinley kit is still a very affordable option yeah. um, if you don't want to go for the full kit and have the time and means to uh, print all this stuff out yourself. Um, it is a pretty good savings, even after the stream. It, it'll be, a, I think it's $100 under the... Kit, yeah. right? Yeah, so it's going to be 129 129 normal price. Yeah. And so we've got 99 right now. Yeah, 99 is the price. Right. Cool. Two more minutes. Two more minutes. For one, more, one minute. more minute. Ooh, the pressure is <laughs> ramping. You now. are procrastinating. Now is your time to. Yeah, now's so your time to sign. It's like an exam. We're not accepting 1201 <laughs> submissions. Oh, no. no. Yeah. Too real. <laughs> <laughs> You're hoping to get away with from that with co-op but yes. 
it's here again. All right, and we're at nine o'clock. Closed. The sale is closed. Um, you can still buy it though. Yes, <laughs> that's true. But what is the point at this point? Um, Don't listen to that. Yeah. <laughs> it's all in the point. Yeah. No. Yeah. Thank you all so much for uh, for joining us on this stream. Um, I said it like a hundred times, but make sure to subscribe and follow because we will be doing more events like this in the future. And if you want to be the first to know, um, we do have a lot of really exciting news kind of lined up for the summer. Um, if you want to kind of see stuff behind the scenes and in real time and even give feedback to new things, uh, please join our community discord. Um, we've had so many, you know, so much great feedback. Um, from there and and we love talking to you guys and getting your thoughts like i'm so amazed by how well the ui turned out um yeah. that i that you you guys will see i mean i, I leaked it a little <laughs> bit but entirely done in conjunction with the community members um and i think that's the main reason it did come out so well yeah. um so i'm really excited for that and then of course uh yeah, we also work with you guys to beta test new products. So if you're interested in any of that or just want to learn more or like lurk around and see what's going on, make sure to join our Discord. Um, make sure if you've got any friends who are asleep during the stream, <laughs> too bad for them, but you can still share. We're going to put out a, a shortened recap tomorrow and people can watch that and learn about you know, automation and 3D printing. Um, and what else the next secret will have a discount code too i hope <laughs> that's a good that's a good point i guess i mean we'll see that's, that's already... <laughs> absolutely. absolutely a little late to the stream but i'll be rewinding have a good go. night. oh garrett you better <laughs> hurry hurry uh i don't know if the discount code is still alive but Maybe we can work something out for. <laughs> I don't know. Easy. It's a twelve oh one, one minute <laughs> past the deadline. Sarah. Yeah, I don't know what our uh, grading oh, grading <laughs> policy is, um, but yeah, if you are interested in three D print automation, if you want to see three D printers used for real production, like please support us. Even uh, either by getting it and experimenting yourself, or just following us and and learning about. Um, yeah, 3D printers for manufacturing because I think I think we all agree here that it 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 will be the next step to uh, you know, secure manufacturing and is the most futuristic <laughs> type is. of manufacturing. Like if Star Trek is anything to go by, like this is definitely where manufacturing is going if we're going to become definitely a the coolest yeah a non-scarcity <laughs> society in the future. Um, or if you're just interested in using printing to to run an automated side business, um, definitely take a look at our site, talk to us in Discord. Um, we all love to chat, so um, yeah. Thank you all for watching the stream. Uh, catch the recap tomorrow, and thank you so much for joining me, Leah. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Yeah, now you get to walk home with your fancy new automated Android <laughs> Pro. Yes, this is so exactly. exciting. Ready to use it. All right. Um, Good night, everyone.